It was a rough trip for the Athletics. The A's ran into two buzzsaws this past week. The Blue Jays and the Orioles, who are both fighting for playoff spots and showed no mercy against the Athletics. And just when the A's thought it was safe to get home, they have a three-time Cy Young Award winner waiting for them. Clayton Kershaw gets the ball as the Dodgers come to town to open up a quick two-game set. It's an interleague matchup between two World Series rivals. Game one, A's-Dodgers next. are back home. Some Mark McGuire fans in the building. It is Mark McGuire bobblehead night tonight. Of course, McGuire is now the hitting coach for the Dodgers. We got interleague baseball coming up from the Coliseum. Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers against Felix Dubrant and the Athletics. It's the first of a quick two-game series. And of course, you'll see it right here on CSN California. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. So Clayton Kershaw is the man right now, Ray, last year, MVP and Cy Young in the National League. He really struggled a little bit early this year, but not anymore. He's been lights out lately. And what you're going to see right now in a package of the pitches that he can throw about anything and everything at any time. Signature pitch is a great curveball the right over the top. That pitch is very devastating to all hitters. Also throws a very good changeup, very quick out of the stretch, a wind up, kind of a different wind up, but he's a very good pitcher. He has struck out 205 batters already, about six weeks remaining in the season. He's done everything, and he's got a pretty good contract to go along with. Not too shabby. Yeah, we'll talk about that <laughs> at some point, but uh, Felix Dubron gets the task of squaring off against Kershaw. His first start with the Athletics, and hey, this is a chance to make an impression on the Athletics. Absolutely. He did it out of the bullpen. Six and a third innings, as you see, that was last week. Came in a relief. Their 95 pitches really was not available in Baltimore, but they knew. Pretty good idea is going to be pitching tonight, so he gets the task. He does get the job of trying to pitch against the Dodgers, and the A's have to try to hit Clayton Kershaw. All right, and a big crowd on hand. A's trying to break the seven-game losing streak, and there's no question they are glad to be back here at the Coliseum. We'll have lineups and first pitch when we come back. It's interleague baseball, the Oakland A's and the Los Angeles Dodgers.
brought to you by Jack in the Box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with Melted Garlic Herb Butter. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. So these are back at the Coliseum and glad to be home after a very difficult road trip as they wear the all green tops today. Behind Felix Dubrant, their starting pitcher as they take the field. Dubrant getting set for the warm up tosses and here's our game time weather for tonight. It's presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now daily 71 degrees. The wind is 14 miles per hour. So a nice little breeze. So it's actually a really a little cooler evening tonight. It feels good. It feels great. <laughs> Everybody looks forward to this type of weather. So let's look at the lineup tonight for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Rollins, Hernandez, Turner, Gonzalez, Van Slyke, Pui, Guerrero, Ellis, and Peterson. Felix DeVon will start his first as a member of the Athletics. He came... Over to the athletics. Looks like he was going to go in the rotation, but Aaron Brooks had a couple of good starts. He did relieve him in Toronto. DeBron over uh, Aaron Brooks, and now DeBron in the rotation. He's faced the Dodgers a couple of times, and while he has a win, ERA is not that spectacular. So trying to get the A's on a winning track after losing seven consecutive on the road in Toronto and Baltimore. Defense behind Felix DeBron. It's full. Burns and Reddick in the outfield. Valencia, Simeon, Sogard, Kent on the infield. Fegley is your catcher. So interleague baseball, the A's were at Dodger Stadium not long ago, and they split the two games down south. And two games here. And it's Mark McGuire bobblehead night here at the ballpark. And they announced Big Mac, and he was touched by yeah. the fact that the A's are giving him a bobblehead. Absolutely. And so he stepped out. He was here for the glory years. Boy, he hit home runs, 363 of them right here. And still the most memorable might have been the one against Randy Johnson at Kingdom. At about 100 mile an hour fastball, Big Mac put a perfect swing on it. And had there not been a roof, it would still have been opening the earth. He was hit that hard. So the first pitch of the ball game, Dubron to Jimmy Rollins is in for a strike. So we're underway. Rollins, Hernandez, and Turner, the first three hitters for the Dodgers. Second pitch is popped up, foul territory. And right on top of the Dodgers dugout. Umpires tonight. Todd Tishner calling balls and strikes, then Tim Timmons, Tim Welke, and Chris Siegel round out the crew. Jimmy Rollins, a local product in some high school. And of course, he was very quick to point out to Mark McGuire, section 111, right over the visiting dugout. He said, I used to watch you all the time here growing up in the Bay Area, watching Mac when he played for the A's. Jimmy Rollins in high school, and here he is. He's a hitting coach for Jimmy Rollins. Two and two to Rollins, first year with the Dodgers. After the great seasons with the Phillies. Two two pitch, just got a piece of it, hit it foul. 36 years old, the MVP in the National League back in 2007, and he helped the Phillies win the World Series in 2008. First time in a long time for the Phillies. He was there for a terrific run. The Phillies had some great teams during that stretch. And Duprat, nice pitch, swing and a miss by Rollins, and that's how this ball game gets going. A Rollins strikeout. Got a good breaking ball. DeBron will throw both the cutter, change up, as well as the. Well, that's kind of like the cut fast ball, acting like a slider. Nice catch by the catcher, Josh Fegley. And I say catch with the palm up. Nice job of receiving the ball. Here's Kike Hernandez who takes the strike. Our XMO brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. 
Fastball cutter curve change so he mixes it around. And the breaking ball and it's a quick go to to Kike Hernandez who's playing second base. Howie Kendrick on the disable is for the Dodgers so Hernandez getting a chance to play. He's done a good job replacing Kendrick. Looks like he already his back swing as a curveball in the dirt. And that's right there at the knee strike three call good pitch by DeBron again. So back to back strikeouts to open up the ball game. Well, great fastball inside corner and Hernandez throws him over two and he didn't think so as he looked back at Todd Tishnall. But hey, anytime an umpire is looking on the inside part of the plate and there's a pitch there you better not question him because he can see that as well as any pitch. So two outs for Justin Turner. Turner playing third base. When the A's were in Los Angeles, Turner was on the disabled list, just got back from the disabled list. And this one's lifted high in the air to left. Sam Full trots in. He's got it. Felix Dubron with a good first inning, three up, three down, with a couple of strikeouts. It starts with Billy Burns. So speed at the top. Burns and Fold and Valencia, Fegley, Canna, Butler, Reddick, Simeon, and Sogard. Your A starting lineup tonight against. Well, he's won 10 games, making his 24th start. How did he lose six? We did not know. That's the delivery that he has pitching out of the stretch, and he's very quick with a slide step. We showed in the open what looked like a changeup, but according to the reports, he doesn't throw one that often, more maybe a slider that he takes something off the pitch, but devastating curveball and a sneaky fastball that he'll pump up in the mid 90s. So Burns, the switch hitter, steps in. Kershaw, the big left hander, stands tall on the mound. First pitch is lined to left center field, the base hit. Burns stops at first, and on the first pitch, he greets Clayton Kershaw with the base hit. I guess the scouting ports haven't re gone to the National League. Billy Burns always aggressive. First pitch location of fastball inside. Maybe didn't get it where he wanted it. And first pitch hitting with an elevated fastball. Billy Burns right on top of it. Hey, no shift either. How about that? Straight up all the way around. Still shallow in the outfield. So here's Sam Full. Turner, the third baseman, in on the grass. Billy Burns swings at the first pitch 48% of the time, third highest in the majors. 
It seems to work for him. He's got a good lead at first. There's that quick throw by Kershaw. Not a whole lot Kershaw does poorly. He's won a gold glove in his career. We'll certainly talk about all of his accomplishments as the ball game goes on. It can take a while. And Owen two now to Sam Fold. I might be surprised so Sam Fold, a true left-handed hitter. He's in the lineup, Josh Reddick as well. And so guards, three lefties, but if you look back at this, really the lack of success of Clay Kershaw in the postseason, especially against the Cardinals. They've had a lot of lefties facing him, and they've done well. Well, it's the only, it's really the only ward on his resume. He's one in five with an area over five in the postseason. But you just have a feeling that that'll get straightened out at some point as well. Sam Fold hits one high in the air. Center field. Peterson a long run, but he's going to get there. He makes the catch. And Billy Burns heads back to first. Defensively for the Dodgers, this is the way they line up. Scott Van Slyke in left. Jack Peterson in center, Yassiel Puig in right. Turner, Rollins, Hernandez, and Adrian Gonzalez with KJ Ellis to catch it. Todd Mattingly at the helm of the Dodgers, who are in first place. They have a three game lead over the Giants in the National League West. So those two teams will have an interesting final six months of the season. Dodgers and Giants play each other seven times yet this year, including four in the season's final week in San Francisco. That's the way it should be. That's exactly right. 0 and 1 to Danny Valencia. There's that quick throw again. So Burns has seen that move twice now. And it is a little bit of a different move, Ray. Yeah, he starts to come up and come back. Instead of the set position, he will throw to first base before it comes down with a set at the waist or chest. So one and one the count. Base dealers against Kershaw, six for 12. So that's pretty good, but I mean, the four pickoffs is significant. Not running, and you saw a slide step there. Valencia swings and misses, so one and two. I think that was the cut fastball and had a sharp little cut action to it out of the strike zone. But he is sneaky fast and different type of wind up, of course, and then the stretch is really unusual, but it works very well for him. And then with a the slide step, he gets rid of it quickly. So two and two to Kershaw or from Kershaw to Valencia with Fegley in the on deck circle. 11 homers, 38 RBIs combined numbers for Valencia and pretty good 294 average. Swing and a miss off speed pitch. Valencia chased it. First strikeout for Kershaw. Yeah, this curveball and like he started thinking it's going to be something other than that. Look at the rotation and out of the strike zone. So there's the breakdown, Ray. The fastball is very good. Slider curve change, and you and I kicked around the slider before we came on the air. And it's a pitch that looks like a splitter. It really breaks down. He's got the big curveball, but then that slider is just a. It may be his best pitch. It just doesn't look. It looks right. more like a splitter than a slider. Yeah. I didn't think of Sonny Gray's slider that has thrown hard, bites, and did a great job against the Dodgers, striking out several, especially Jack Peterson with a good slider. Sonny Gray took the loss last night in Baltimore. Grounded to Rollins, who scoops it up. He'll throw to second. Side retired. So 
Billy Burns leads off the inning with single, and that's it for the Athletics. No score after one. Buy Real Strong Redwood. Why Redwood? Visit realstrongredwood.com. Nice night. Parking lot is full. As they were expecting, sound like over 30,000 tonight. So that's exciting. And a very nice night for a ball game. Against a good Dodger team. And good to hear the A's fans kind of overpower the. Dodgers fans who during the introductions. So Adrian Gonzalez will lead things off. Van Slyke to follow and then Puig. Against Felix Dubron who had a three up three down first inning with a couple of strikeouts. First start with the A's for Dubron after a couple of relief appearances. Could almost give him a start in that second relief appearance though. 95 pitches in Toronto. Gonzalez fouls it back. So quick go two to the Dodgers slugging first baseman. Everybody will always talk about, especially in the American League, because the Dodgers have Guerrero as their DH tonight. And they're facing Kershaw, but in the America late you don't face him, but you figured Kershaw is not going to give up many runs. So while you may not be actually facing him as a hitter. And it falls. Sanford and Simeon cannot get together. And somehow the ball falls and it'll be a single for Gonzalez. Well, similar on Sunday, it was Coco and Simeon. Simeon went out and maybe Coming in hard was Sam Foley, and he usually takes charge, and he started, and actually, I got it, I got it, and Simeon's there, and then that's when their collision happened. So, a leadoff hit, and here's Van Slyke. And there's your two strike fly ball that should have been caught, yep. and it's not an error, because it's going to go as a base hit, because nobody touched it. But say often will continue to say it's an infielder's ball until the outfielder calls him off and Sam Fold came in and I, I think with Sam Fold his aggressiveness the way he plays all out that you can always defer to him. I mean he's he's figured he's going to be there but Simeon has to go out until he hears. Him. In there for a strike, one and one to Van Slyke. Van Slyke plays quite a bit against left handed pitching. 
Yeah, he's a fortunate it was Gonzalez running and not somebody yeah, else. Exactly. Should have been a second anyway because he did not hit it that hard and maybe thought it was going to be caught. This one's popped up. Near the on deck circle, Fegley makes the catch. Right in front of the side wall, one away. And he didn't see it till late, and that's why coming in hard was Mark Canna. He was holding the runner, so he was able to get in close. But they heard up, 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 and he looked and found it and then got back to it. It's there. And Canna was also near the play to be able to make it. Hit. They did not found it. Hey, well, you got, a, you, you got a few things to maneuver around too yeah. in that on deck right. circle. You got bats and all that stuff is just sitting there. There's six, seven different yeah. things there. And as long as they're in the on deck circle, they're fine. Yep. It's just whatever they're scattered around as a couple of the items are there, but that's usually the bat boy's responsibility to make sure all of them are there. So here's Puig, 249, 10 homers, 35 RBIs for. Dodgers right fielder, Yassiel Puig. Big, strong. Holds that bat. And he blasts from the left field. Fold his bat, and it hangs, and must have got it off yep. the end of the bat. Yes, he did. So he had that big swing, and it went up, and it died, and it had to be down off the end. Now you see that span, the rotation. And Puig did hit it off the end of the bat. He knew it. Fired his bat. So a good swing, but did not hit it on the right part of the bat. So I think that flip right there was enough to say that he didn't get it. Fooled me. I thought yeah. he got it. Glad he didn't. So two away. Here's Alex Guerrero. Guerrero, big swing and a miss. Guerrero DHing tonight. He's an infielder, 239, 11 homers, 32 RBIs. He's the one to hit the time grand slam with two outs, two strikes in the ninth. I think I can't remember who that was against. Colorado, I think, I think it was Colorado, Colorado yeah. And then down to the last strike and grand slam time. Oh, and two. These guys just swings hard all the time. He yeah. does. And that's that makes a huge difference. And, and pitchers and catchers can watch the swing of a hitter. They can tell you what he's trying to do. He does not get cheated anytime. Now field pulled a little bit toward right. Ruddick shallow and right. Fingers here's a two seam fastball. And he got it in there. And it's jammed and fouled back by Guerrero. So the count remains one and two. No score here in the second inning. This one rolled off the tarp. Nice little buzz in the crowd tonight. Yeah, it's got to be pretty special. You have a, a giveaway, Mark Choir, Bobblehead, and you see this kind of a crowd on a Tuesday night. School starting this week, and he's coming off a bad road trip, so this is a good sign. You can see him here. No, we saw plenty of big crowds on the road trip. Seven games on the trip, and I think they were all over 35,000 except last night in Baltimore. See, those fans didn't expect a night game on a Monday night either. No, and neither did we. <laughs> but we made the best. 22,000 of them came out.
Another one two to Guerrero breaking ball swing and a miss he struck him out. So another strikeout for Dubrani works around the leadoff single and the A's come to bat in the bottom of the second no score. Three Cy Youngs are ready for Clayton Kershaw before the age of 27. He was the MVP in the National League last year. Six straight seasons of 200 or more strikeouts, four straight ERA titles. And since 1974, the sixth pitcher with multiple 30 plus scoreless inning streaks. So he's something. There's his Cy Young seasons last year, 21 and 3. Again, just 27 years old from Dallas, Texas. He was the seventh round or seventh overall pick, excuse me, in the 2006 draft. So he got through six teams and the Dodgers took him at seven. A one pitch to Canna is lined down the left field line. Uh, all the way to the line. It's going to get Canna to a single. So the Kershaw resume has a no hit. That was last year in June. And I remember going home after one of our games and watching the final two innings. And they're just, it, it just could not imagine somebody getting a hit off him. He was so nasty. <laughs> I, you know, you really can't imagine when he does pitch. Billy Burns canceled the post game celebration <laughs> with the first pitch they came. And the wonderful Hawk Harrelson canceled the. Canceled. Hawk is beautiful when he said it. Yeah, cancel the press conference. Got it, got it hit. But yeah, he was good. 15 strikeouts and. Well, the other night there were three pitchers struck out 15 and same for sale. I mean, he's been off the charts. Baumgartner that same day had 14. Well, if it's possible for Kershaw to struggle some, which it's kind of funny actually, but he did a little bit early this year, but not lately. In fact, his last six starts, he's 5 and 0, a 0 0.75 ERA. See, that stretches it out to nine starts, but there's a couple numbers I want to throw at you, Ray. You'll chuckle. In those six starts, he's thrown 48 innings. He's got three walks and 58 strikeouts. So, yeah, so it's a, it's a highlight here at 3 and 0 to Billy, Bur to Billy Butler. There it is. That's impressive. That is And he walked it. As for the baseball. Four pitch walk. Cancel the press. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Hawk, yeah, Hawk caught some perfect games, Burley, of course. Uh, but some, some guys would go a few innings and the Hawk would say, yeah, can't take those comments. Got to hit. <laughs> so here's Reddick. You know, like we were talking to Baltimore, Kershaw in anticipation of this start, and of course the great Sandy Colfax and perfect games that he threw and the no hitters and some guys take them out every time you think there is that possibility. First pitch is high, and I think a guy like Kershaw, first walk to a right-handed hitter in 37 plate appearances is. I mean, you you know, guys are going to get hits off of, but it's so hard to get two or three right. hits off them in an exactly. inning. That's why this. And that's inning, what you need to score a run. Yeah, and this inning especially yeah. got a single and a walk, two on nobody out. Reddick had a good swing, fouls it straight back. I mean, he's just got such great stuff, and stringing together multiple hits against him is very, very difficult to do. Amazing about the the shifts that we have accustomed to seeing with Josh Reddick. Look at this. Talk about straight up the outfield, straight up. Jimmy yeah. Rollins slightly at second base, but he's there because of a possible double play. But this is not what we've been seeing with Josh Reddick. Reddick butts. Ellis throws to first, so Reddick. Don't know if that was a sacrifice in his mind. He may have been bunting for a hit. I think he was bunting on his own just to advance the runners. Maybe he wanted to take one chance, one shot. But again, this is American League. A lot of times you do not see guys sacrificing. And even first and second, nobody out. But you take one swing, you don't get it done. And I think it's something that Bob Melvin would answer after the game. Was it on his own or was it a sign? But the way he was pushing the ball. Looked like he was yeah, trying to bunt it toward to third. Pushing the ball. And first and second, you push it to third, he has to field it. The runners are going to advance. And you know, Josh Reddick is not one to bunt a lot. Just the way he, he kind of pushed at it. I yeah. think he was trying to bunt it toward third. Yeah, he was right there. And, you know, and if it was true, he might have been more of a squaring around and pushing it to third base, but with his body moving towards first. But regardless, got the job done. I'm going to assume a sacrifice. Yes, so that's good. Well, what a know to Simeon. Second and third, one out. And there's that hard slider, and Simeon holds up 2 0. Uh, a good hold up by Marcus Simeon. Now remember, Eric Sogard, another lefty, is in the on deck circle, and first base is open. This is almost similar to a National League setup where you have a eighth place hitter, the pitcher hitting ninth, and first base is open. We'll see what Kershaw does to Marcus Simeon, and maybe for him, expanding his zone a little bit. Man, a swing and a miss. So, see that 2 0 yep. pitch? That's he's got to deal with. He's either going for a strikeout or pitching him carefully. There's your slider. So it really almost breaks straight down yeah. that slide. Yeah, that, that could have been the cutter. Or he, he throws the cutter and the slider, which both are are similar, but of course the slider is a little bit bigger movement. I'm talking about this slider pitch by Kershaw, how much he uses it and how well it's been. You see the slider usage from 2011 through 2015. That's the top number, and then the opponent's average against that slider. This year actually a little higher than other years. So two and two. Simeon trying to make contact. And he lays off a good pitch there. That's a great curveball that he laid off, and that's a, a good pitch not to swing at. And, and again, this is where a hitter, in the case of Marcus Simeon, has to be thinking, is he going to pitch me carefully? Is he going to try to Get me to chase a pitch, try to get a strikeout with first base open, and not be concerned if he does walking. But you have to be aggressive, but also a little bit patient. Three-two, hit towards second. That'll get a run home. Hernandez picks it up. So good at bat by Simeon. He absolutely had to put it in play, and he did. McCann comes in to score. And it was like a cutter. It wasn't like the true fastball at 87 with the cutting action on it, and he just left it up a little bit too much. And that's a pretty good pitch to stay inside the pitch, which Marcus Simeon did. Once he got a pass, Kershaw, and was going to play the run. So the single, the walk, and Reddick advancing both runners. The A score run. And more importantly, Billy Butler goes to third where he can score. 
Sogard swings at the high fastball. Get him to third. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, 90 feet's big for Billy Butler. Yes, it is. Especially with the outfield playing as shallow as they are. Sogard fouls it back, and now the count is 0 2. Feel very shallow. Big Kirk tapped to Kershaw behind his back. What a play. <laughs> that might have been a base hit. That one. may have been a base hit, and Kershaw made a sensational play. Wow. May have cost the A's a run. Heck of a play. A's get one. It's one nothing after two. Job, but how about the play to end the inning? Terrific. Saved a run. I mean, he just put his glove, and really the ball found the glove. And you see pitchers do that, and it worked out because as slowly as his hit, curveball, late swing, put the glove. Oh, look what I found, and flipped it. It's the out. I don't think the ball would have went through, but no. I think it would have been a tough play for the second right. baseman to throw out Sogar. Exactly. I mean, they'll make all kinds of highlight reels and what a great play, but it's just throw your glove yeah, and it's you're taking a chance. You're taking a chance. You hope the ball finds your glove and it did. AJ Ellis to lead it off. Ellis, Peterson, and Rollins, eight, nine, and one for the Dodgers. Dodgers record is 67 and 51. It's the fourth best record in the National League. And they have won five out of six. So start of a road trip for them. They were off yesterday. And they will be off on Thursday. Two here in Oakland and three in Houston and three in Cincinnati. And I was talking to McGuire about and he said you know tomorrow should be a day or night game consider we have the off day and he said they're actually going to stay over <laughs> and uh, before flying. Okay. But Mac knows playing here that uh, back in. Late 80s when he played here, they had 35, 38,000, close to 40,000 on midweek day games. And a leadoff walk to Ellis. Fans follow the Athletics all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. That bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay hey, reviews, man. radio broadcast, hey, adcast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. Four pitch walk is not what you want when you're fortunate to get a run off the great lefty. No, I just don't think the A's they, they can't make any mistakes tonight. No. Well, they did, unfortunately. They did, yeah. and you know, DeBron did. I was going to make that point, but I'm glad you brought it up because when the miscommunication occurred in left field, that's what you do as a pitcher. 
It wasn't an error, but you get a base runner on. And DeBrot got a couple of fly ball outs, one foul, one to left, and struck out uh, Guerrero and did his job. Last night there was an error and ended up being a single to three run home run following that. But you like pitchers who say, okay, made a mistake, I'll take care of it. So one and oh the count to Jack Peterson, who's from Palo Alto, so he's got family and friends here, I'm sure. Had a terrific first half for the Dodgers, but has really struggled in the second half. Lots of power. He's got the 23 home runs, but he's been striking out a lot. He has struck out 139 times, second most in the American League. And it's high, and now it's 3 0. So seven straight out of the strike zone by Dubron. And lefty on lefty, you're always concerned. Well, Don Mattingly say to the lefty, you're going to get a fastball. It's just a question is it in your zone and get you to give the green light? Although it would be eight consecutive, maybe out of the strike zone. You don't want to get a pitch, you get an over aggressive hitter and make a, a bad pass at it. No chance there. Well, the Dodgers got something going. There's the home run leaders and the strikeout leaders. I think what stands out on the home run leaders and that's in the National League, but I think it's across baseball as well. Look at all the young players. I mean, they're all relatively young players. Except Adrian Gonzalez, he's a veteran. Strikeout leaders, Chris Davis on top. That's in the major league. Peterson. He'll figure it all out, and I think he'll be a very good player. Two on, nobody out. Rollins steps in. And that one's low. Throws past Fegley, but he quickly gets to it. Yeah, the corners are playing in for a bunt. I, I don't know until he throws a strike that would even consider doing yeah. anything. And, and I don't know if the Rollins is even going to bunt anyway. But right now, he's not close to the strike zone. And best part of there, if runner else had tried to go to third, Fegley could have thrown him out. You know, what DeBron did in Toronto, he came in in relief, gave up a couple of hits, but man, settled down with about the last six innings, gave up nothing. Yep. And this is a little surprising after pitching so well. Just the one base hit to left field that should have been caught. Other than that, three strikeouts. Now can't find the strike zone, can't find the plate. Rollins struck out in the first inning. Two walks, three strikeouts for Dupont. The trouble here in the third. And that one on the inside corner for strike. So maybe that'll relax him a little bit. Kike Hernandez, another right handed hitter, waits in the on deck circle. There's a shot foul. Ron Renneke yeah. is the new third base coach for the Dodgers, yeah. just hired a couple days ago. Former manager of the Brewers, he did his duties, and suddenly the change was made. Actually, yesterday he was hired. And Max said uh, coaches are told on Sunday the change is going to be made. Popped up. Could be playable. Canna. He's got it. He's got to check the runner and he gets it in quickly. So a big out as Dubron bounces back. And now he'll face Kike Hernandez. Now, 
You know, one of the great things about that play with all this foul territory, I'm thinking Jimmy Rollins knows the foul territory, probably watched some football games here as well. But the key here, there's always a concern about the runner from second taking off. Look at the cutoff man is as Canna throws the ball back in, cutoff man, Marcus Simi. Shortstop runs in to be the cutoff man. And that way you don't have to make the throw all the way to third base and take the chance of making an error throw. So very smart on both parts. It's a couple of young players executing it perfectly. I don't know that Ellis is going to attempt to run, but never know. set it up for the future if something like that does happen again. And Canna just short of the goal line. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I did notice that. <laughs> Very short of the goal line. Thought he's going to dive in, but no. decided to make the catch, keep both the feet in bounds. He, <laughs> yeah, he, he just came up a little short. <laughs> His forward progress was stopped right there. Well, we always appreciate the A's great ground crew when games like this occur at this time of the year because we know what has preceded tonight's game a few days ago. So the field looks okay now. A lot of work by Clay and his crew. Dubron has it. Spins, fires to second. Good throw there back to first. Not quite in time. So the A's get the second out. Pretty good speed for Hernandez on a check swing. But DeBron had to wait for the ball to come down and by the time he threw the second, which is a good throw, and then also gave the trailing runner, Peterson, a chance to get down on Simeon to get out of the way to make the throw to first base. Good, so good throw by DeBron to second yeah. to get the lead runner. And that's that's the key. That is the key because you always in question of whether that throw is going to be good because that's the play to make and you get the lead runner keep the force and order but also take one of the runners out of scoring position. So tough out here Justin Turner. Now brought let the ball come down and then perfectly to Simeon. He knew who was going to be covering. Simeon was there just couldn't turn the double play. At your PSP and they do it all the time and that's when it pays off when you make a good throw to second. You know I think it helped him too that he was actually on the grass so that's he's throwing true. on flat ground. That's a good point. You and stay on the mound you're throwing. Sideways uphill, uphill sideways downhill. downhill who knows. To an 0 now the curveball. He's with a one to nothing lead against Kershaw and the Dodgers. Ellis at third, Hernandez at first. Strike down around the knees. So he painted in the lower part of the strike zone on two and oh. One thing's pretty consistent about the Dodgers hitters and you see the leg kick and the load where they're lifting the front leg and and they're getting ready to swing at almost anything that's close to the strike zone. You see Turner lift the leg and that's going to go back and he's ready. It's a high fly ball right field but Reddick's there. He's got it. Dubron gets out of the inning. He walked the first two but the Dodgers do not score. Bottom of the third coming up. One nothing A's.
includes free heritage events. If this sounds like fun to you, round up your posse and head to Roaring Camp. Big question here. What does Clayton Kershaw throw Billy Burns first pitch? <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> Worth watching. It, it really, because scouting report is there. We know that. And just like Mark McGuire talked about the, the slider of Sonny Gray. He says, I told the hitters that he's going to throw it. And sure enough, he did. Got a lot of strikeouts. Billy Burns, first pitch hitting. Does it again. Ella set up inside. The pitch was outside, but Billy liked it. And. Ready to go. Game, or at least a home run saving catch last night. Straight away center field off of Chris Davis. 3,000 miles away. There's that big overhand curve by Kershaw. Have not seen that a lot tonight yet. Oh, and two to Burns. Ball just a little up and away. Full to follow, and then Valencia here in the bottom of the third. Right there, strike three call. They fastball at 91 miles an hour. So one away. Interesting last night. Sam Fold was. Called out and then thrown out. And Bob Melvin ended up getting thrown out. Ray, we think that Brian Knight made the wrong call. Yes. Because you get to create your own That's right. path from yep. the time you make contact. Right. And and he the, the, the key there, and it's an umpire's discretion, if the umpire thinks that the runner is moving to try to get hit. Yeah, exactly. Sam Fold actually ended up yeah, in he, line. He, yeah, he, he moved and it was a wrong call. And because if you bunt, your momentum is going to take you on the grass. Well, from that point on the grass, you start running to the back. That's right. And that's what he did. And again, we saw Caleb Joseph. If he had made the correct throw, the right throw, it would have been a moot point because he threw it into the runner. And then Ryan Knight panicked and called him out, which was not the right call. Line to left, but Van Slyke is there. So that is the second out here in the third, and that play gets us to our Geico quote of the game. There's Sam Fold, Bob Melvin <laughs> on last night's ejection <laughs> by Brian Knight. Fold kept asking Knight, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> Bob Melvin said, Knight told me to go look at the play. I did, and came back and tell him he got the call wrong, and I was lost. <laughs> that, that was beautiful. I was hoping that was going to be the, the quote because that's we remember how Bob was delayed coming he was out. a little late yeah he came out of the dugout and then you know, I thought maybe he just went and look at it well didn't know the umpire said go look at it. I did and you were wrong and he was wrong <laughs> I did what you told me to do <laughs> and I looked at it and all Sam Fold did was ask him what did I do wrong and he didn't he never gave him an explanation and that's what frustrated Sam so I guess the point we're making is when Sam Fold made contact his body was out right. ahead into the the inner part of the infield, right. but from that point then to first right. base, there's your that's your that's your line to run on, and he never really veered off that line. So you are creating your own base right. path. And really, you should almost eliminate that 45 foot lane. Just get rid well of that it. yeah yeah get rid of it because you're, you're almost telling the runners they have to stay in that lane, and you don't. I mean, you, you like you said, you create your own base pad just like you do when you're running first to second or second to third, and you try to avoid a tap. Kershaw was now, barking at Todd Tishner, and Kershaw does not do this very often. But close pitch. This one taps slowly. Kershaw knocks it down, but Valencia is going to have a hit, and Kershaw is <laughs> not happy. Oh, oh, he fires the baseball into the Dodgers dugout. Wow. wow. He fired it into the far end of the dugout. Heads up, teammates. Well, he fired it first into the turf after he missed one. Well, the call he thought was missed. Now, watch this. He's going to field it or miss it and then field it. Watch what he does. Fires it into the ground and then picks it up. He unbelievably said, okay, I don't, I don't like this Still baseball mad. anyway. Still yeah. mad. <laughs> 
That's a first. That is a first. That's beautiful. Yeah. But you know what was smart about that play? He oh, threw it into the ground. He didn't err. He could have no. it on the stands, but at least oh, he threw it into the ground. I've never seen that before. <laughs> and he's pretty mild mannered guy. Yeah. He's mad at Tishner. That's who he's Absolutely. mad at. Yeah, he thought he had strikeout. And then when he didn't feel the curveball that it was hit by Valencia. A little bit inside to Fegley. Yeah, this is when he is upset. Yeah. <laughs> Catch it. I'm good. I'm good. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, my guess, though, we may want to, we may not want to tick him off. I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> So one and one to Fegley. And hit by Valencia, the third for the A's. Uh, more of a play for the third baseman Turner, and so a lot of frustration there. There was time called on that before he fired the ball in the dugout. Well, they they <laughs> the home plate umpire threw a new ball yeah. in, and that's Kershaw saw that, and then he fired it into the dugout. Huh. Two and one to Fegley. Fegley had a good rip there. Hits it high and foul right side. Oh, the old saying about you come to the park, you see something you've never seen before. I've never seen that. Have you ever seen that? I've never seen that. I've never seen that. I've seen pitchers throw baseballs in the stands, but to be that frustrated like that. Two two pitch, good one there, and Fegley swings and misses, so a hit. A little comedy, and we're through three <laughs> innings, and the A's. Heavy one nothing lead. Photo to CSNCA Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself on an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. Tonight's fan photos from Janine Rubbit, lives in San Ramon, and she is with her son, Tim. Appreciate that, Janine. Keep the photos coming. So, 1 0, the A's lead. It's the top of the fourth inning. 
Felix Dubron got himself in trouble in the third. He walked the first two hitters. And he did it on eight pitches. But he was able to bounce back and keep the Dodgers off the board. First pitch to Adrian Gonzalez is low. Gonzalez had the blue pit in the first inning. You know, people might say there are times that a pitching coach goes out, a catcher will go out and say, what do they talk about? What are they doing? Well, in the case of Kurt Young, not only the eight pitches for the two walks, but then the first pitch, Jimmy Rollins was a ball. Kurt Young went out and just a little settling down and maybe correct something on a mechanical flaw. And what did he do? Threw a strike, got Rollins, and got the next really three batters after Kurt Young paid the visit. So, I mean, so throwing out a possible mechanical adjustment, that's not out of the question. No, no. I mean, Kurt could have noticed something and maybe just went out and said, you might be doing this or that. And uh, all of a sudden, he's throwing strikes and he's getting outs. And that's important either for a catcher to notice it or pitching coach. It's easier for a catcher because he's 60 feet away. For a pitching coach in the dugouts, like Rick Honeycutt for the Dodgers, Kurt Young for the A's, by the way, teammates in 89. Yeah, yeah they're teammates. But you're looking at a farther in a different angle. Check it. Yep. Andy W. Could not hold up. Big curveball. And Gonzalez stares down at Chris Siegel. He didn't agree with the call. Siegel says you went around. And that is strikeout number four. Well, we'll look at it at this angle and then check it in. But watch the head of the number bat. Watch the bat hit. He didn't throw it. That's not a swing. I don't think it is either. It's not a swing. And that one, though, it did. The other one did not. So, I mean, it's kind of confusing, but it's always difficult for the corner umpires to make such a quick decision on a. It's, it's not reviewable because it's in front of. Want to know to Scott Van Slyke, who fouled out to Fegley in the second inning. Breaking ball stays high. Interleague baseball this year. The Dodgers are eight and four. The A's are six and six. So next year, the A's and the rest of the AL West will play the National League Central. Popped up again. And it's going to be Canna who's under it, grabs it near the mouth for the second out. So you got the Brewers and the Cubs and the Cardinals and Cincinnati. Why'd you say no, Brewers no. first? Just the first <laughs> team that popped <laughs> into my head. Pittsburgh. Just, just happened to be in the Milwaukee area, which is close <laughs> to the farm, right? <laughs> There's the breakdown this year for the A's. The AL East has hurt the yeah. A's big time, and of course we saw that on the road trip. But nine and twenty-one. Curveball to Puig is high. Actually, it's pretty nice going to uh, Miller Park in Milwaukee and see oh. the great Bob Uecker and see how he runs that whole place. Good summertime yeah. place. You may not want to go there in January. Yeah. Let's close the roof. It's true. A little bit inside, 2 0 to Puig, who hit a fly ball to left field in the second inning. So now you have Cespedes and Puig, both in the National League. Right. Mets and the Dodgers. Mets for uh, Cespedes, and they're in Baltimore. Bob Guerin said uh, yesterday, when he says, How's Cespedes doing? He said, Where's well, Miami? I went to Miami for the off day. <laughs> He said, I'll spend the off day in Miami down with the family instead of going to Baltimore. How much fun would it be just to follow Yohannes Cespedes around in yeah, Miami I for a day? That. You know, Puig and Cespedes, a, a lot of similarities yeah. to their game, except Cespedes a little more refined. Right. And a four pitch walk with two outs. And Puig is. Good speed, so you got to keep an eye on him. He's not necessarily a big base dealer, but he's a guy that can now score that from first on a double. And let's not forget when Felix Rabon yeah. pitched for the Toronto Blue Jays here. The only game the A's won. Matter of fact, the only game the A's won against the Blue Jays this season. 
He was taking a lot of time out of the stretch delivering to the plate the point the A's were running wild and right and actually Bob Melvin was ejected in the game because Hunter Wendelstead when Russell Martin went in the right handed batter's box to take what looked like a pitch out to reach back and just trying to get to the ball as quickly as possible to make the throw to second. So with that in mind and two outs and Puig at first let's see what happens. Fegley has a very very strong arm and that can counteract any slowness by a pitcher. That one hit toward right. Reddick got a good jump. Tracks it down. Side retired. So the two out walk does no damage. And it's still one nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Genie together building a better California. One nothing. A's lead. Bottom of the fourth inning. I think the wind is picked up here. It's just came in the booth. Or maybe just a, I mean, a hurricane in the booth. My something. scorecard was yeah. pinned against the window over there next to Marty, our camera. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> it has gotten a little breezy here in the last. This feels great. Nice. Nice temperatures. I don't recall feeling this breeze in Baltimore. No. Speaking of Baltimore, I remembered uh, talking about frustrating pitchers. Sam McDowell, the great lefty. It's your guy. Was pitching in Baltimore at Old Memorial Stadium, and he was frustrated, very frustrated. He threw a baseball, and Sam had a strong arm, but he threw it at the upper deck at Old Memorial Stadium. And he was ejected. He got fined. The umpire actually counted the number of rows in which he threw the baseball and find him an amount per row. Wow. And that was how that's tough. Yeah, but to think that the umpire knew exactly where it landed and went out and counted the rows. So why did he throw it? <laughs> oh, Sam was just I mean, was it a ball strike thing? Yeah, I think it was. You know, Sam. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh, uh -oh. AJ Ellis just bumped into yeah. Todd Tishner. Well, Tishner Kershaw, Kershaw did something. And Ellis was protecting his pitcher, which he should be doing. And Kershaw said something, I think, because Canna asked for time late. And we have noticed that uh, there's a little bit extra time taken anyway. But well, let's see what happened here. Canna's taking yeah. time, which he does. Kershaw's ready, and he's ready to go. So, yeah, you know what? Canna didn't, didn't, didn't ask for time. The whole plate umpire right. just called him. And you know what, Cap? I was thinking because what Ellis had done, he'd called the sign. He had already called the sign. It's something. I think it was just the fact that I mean, Canada takes a long time to get right. in. Jamie Moyer and Ruiz with the Phillies. Remember they came in here, and Jamie Moyer 
would actually have Ruiz give a sign while the hitter was getting ready. And as soon as he stepped in, he delivered. Ready to go. And ready to go. And so, really, it's more of if you're going to take that time, you can't fall the pitcher. You better be ready when exactly. you step in. Exactly. You step in because the pitcher's ready, and Kershaw has been standing on the mound ready to go. Yeah. I, I can see where Kershaw would be mad there right. because he's just standing there ready to pitch. Yeah. Canna's taking his time. And as soon as that foot went in, let's go. I'm ready. And, and in reality, there's nobody on base. Contact was not made. It's not supposed to leave the box. And that, that's where these new pace of game rules. Hernandez has it, and Billy Butler is retired. But Tishner should be more on himself about not insisting sure. that the hitter be in the batter's box because of the pace of game. He's not allowed. The hitter's not allowed to step out with no contact made, nobody on base, and the whole thing. Yeah, he he needs to if now, he right needs to get Canna in the box. And get him to him. Really, tell him not to step out after pitch is made. That's right. So he could have probably avoided that. Yeah. He being the umpire. Interesting night for Clayton Kershaw. The frustration. Yeah. One and one the count to Reddick who had a sacrifice bunt in the second helped the A's get a run. You know your, your point about Ellis bumping Tishner. Tishner stepped out and all Ellis did was step up. True. And get in front of him and there was kind of a bumping. And you know from Ellis standpoint he was protecting his pitcher but is more Tishner upset with Kershaw which probably going back a couple of innings ago. Upset about that as well. Reddick. Loops one down the left field line for a hit. So Reddick has a base hit. Well, here's the pitch to Canna in a curveball and called a strike. Got back and see Canna taking his time. See, he needs to get in there. Yeah. Hit. I mean, I see Tishner's not doing anything to force him to get back in there. I mean, Kershaw is ready to yeah. go. See, I don't think Kershaw did anything wrong. No. I agree. Back up the middle. Hernandez straightens up throws to first side retired. Reddick ahead. He's stranded. And we're headed to the fifth inning. And it's one to nothing. The A's lead Kershaw in the dodge. Plans would go on sale Friday, August the 21st. That's this Friday at 10 a.m. Get on board early with 2016 priority seating and choose your exact seating location for next season. A's offer a variety of full and partial season plans that qualify for great benefits, including half-price parking, a flexible ticket exchange program, and much, much more. 
For more information, call 510-638-GOAZE or visit athletics.com slash 2016 And tell you, you got a lot to look forward to in the future of this ball club and a lot of young players learning how to play this great game. And we'll see how much that benefits them going in to the new season and forward. Ellis, Peterson, and Rollins for the Dodgers. Top of the fifth inning. And it's 2 0. Oh. And Dubrot. Fly ball, fly ball, fly. Ball. He's got a few. Not a lot of first pitch strikes either, but he's getting the job done so far pitching into the fifth inning. Three walks and four strikeouts. And 60 pitches so far. Strike on the outside corner, so now it's two and two. It's a location fastball inside, and how many times have we seen where a catcher moves the way Fegley did, and it's not called a strike even though it was a strike. Coming inside. And it just missed. Dubron thought maybe it was a strike. He hit the target. So pretty good pitch by Dubron, but he did not get the call. And he missed high, and it's a leadoff walk. He's given up one hit. That was a Gonzalez base hit that probably shouldn't have been a hit, but that's the fourth walk. Well, he's playing with fire just a yes, little bit. Yes, he is. Now, it's the third time in five innings that the leadoff man has got a board, and this is a good Dodger offense. Yeah, 23 home runs hitting ninth. There you go. <laughs> Chuck Peterson, he's leading off in Los Angeles when the A's were there, at least in the first game. Dodgers are fourth in the National League in runs scored. They're first in home runs. They've hit 146. They don't steal any bases. They're last in steals, but. They're first in walks, second in slugging, and first in on base percentage. So they can do some damage. This is the eighth consecutive game for the Athletics, seven on the road, and tonight that you're always concerned. Blue Jays hit home runs, Orioles, yeah. and now the Dodgers, as you mentioned. So you get a runner on base and you've got a lead. How quickly it could disappear. Sure. We saw that. Or how quickly it could get you back in the game. Right. We definitely saw that in Baltimore. So more home runs this year already than last year. A uh, guy with the uh, goatee hit 363 here, so he knows what home runs are like. Mark McGuire got Oh Hershiser, who pitched for the 88 Dodgers, and a couple of Bruce Silver. Got Rick Mundy, who was the number one draft choice in '65. On the radio side, there's Hershiser. Vin Scully did not yeah, make the yeah. trip. Alice Steiner with him on TV side. Now, Vinny was saying that he's just going to travel to San Francisco, the rivalry, and then do just Dodger games. Saw so the great one. There's Rick Mundy. Kevin Kennedy working alongside him. So they've got some. Rick Mundy, 1965, 50th anniversary of the first ever draft, and he was number one by the Kansas City Athletics. He put those white shoes on and he's never been the same. <laughs> That's right. Except when he saved the flag in 1976 as a member of the Cubs. He's actually traded the Cubs for Kenny Holson. Yep. Pretty good trade. Absolutely. Probably good trade for both teams, Absolutely. but I think maybe good timing for Ken Holson. Oh, yes. 2 2, and Peterson got one to hit as the curveball stayed up. 88 the all time record now for consecutive scoreless innings. And number 55. 88 was his season. Looks it like is. San Diego. So I think it's right here for the uh, final game of the World Series in 88. Three and two, Dubron wanted it. Three 
with two runner goes pitch is low trouble again for Dubron. Well that would have been great to be a strike him out because Fegley was ready to throw and he would have thrown him out. Did not get a chance with the aggressive Peterson swinging at a pitch too much in the in the uh, lower part out of the strike zone in the dirt. Let's see if Kurt Young can say some magical words again. Well the magical words worked in the third and he's got the exact same situation here in the fifth so Kurt's going to have to come up with something again. So let's already go put one ball count to Rollins because he's waited after nine pitches this time at least he threw strikes to the two batters Ellis and Peterson he did not do that in the third inning. Wow. So the meeting is over. How about it? Number 11, Jimmy. So Rollins. here's Rollins, top of the order. Well, the A's were thinking bunt back in the third inning. They're at the corners thinking the same thing this inning. Kike Hernandez is the on deck hitter. Rollins is bunting, doesn't have to. Shoots right past Fegley, second and third, nobody out. That looked like a strike, and it's going to be a passed ball. Well, you know, one of the things that happens when catchers have the palm down. And the ball sinks, it's going down. You turn it up, it's going to be caught. Sure. Turn it down, scoots under, and that's a big, big uh, two bases. Corner infielders in, middle infielders back. One out of Rollins, not close. So now it's 2 and 0. Oh. Uh, definitely made up for it with this one because this is a great scoop. And no chance to get his body in front of him, so he had to reach out like an infielder. Great opportunity for the Dodgers, and that one in first strike, so two and one. 73 pitches for Dubron, but five walks, and two of those walks on base here in the fifth inning. And a miss. An off speed, and now it's two and two. It's almost like on Rollins is trying to hit the ball to the right side to get a couple of things done. Two two pitch. Bounce to the right side. It's going to get a run home. So a very productive out for Rollins and again it looked like he was trying to do that. So Ellis scores Peterson to third and we got a 1 1 game. That's exactly and that's a great job because he did it swung and missed one came back with the same pitch outside this time Rollins. Did it perfectly. And that's. That's just great teamwork team play. Now the infield has to come in. But the walks. Yep. This one scores. The previous three had not, and trying to avoid this one, uh, it's on third now from scoring. First pitch to Kike Hernandez at the knees. First strike. So two walks and the pass ball. Well, you have to think if Rollins had successfully bunted second and third, one out, would the infield have come in as they are right now? So Dubron ahead this time. It's 0 and 2. Pitching for the strikeout or a pop up. Hernandez has struck out and reached out a fielder's choice. And the dirt swing and a miss. 
Begley fires it to first and a huge strikeout for Dubron. You know, after having a pass ball called against Fegley, he put his glove on the ground. He wanted DeBron to throw the curveball in the dirt. His glove is down there. He did. He blocked it perfectly. Got the swing and miss. Kept the runner at third. And Mark Cannon, first base, was standing off the bag. And that's what you also want to see with a runner running down the line. Get inside, give a good target. And Cannon stepped inside, caught the ball, tagged the bag. All things working well. So one more tough out to get it's Justin Turner who has hit a fly ball the right field and a fly ball the left field. First pitch just a bit outside. Curve. Bounced at the plate and then it squirts foul down the third baseline. Dubron trying to limit the damage to just this one run. 23 pitches here in the fifth. Inside corner strike two call. Well, you get that strike called on the inside corner, it opens up a lot of different things. Uh, the high leg kick, and then by the time he got the foot down, the fastball was on the inside corner. One two pitch breaking ball struck him out. Well, it could have been worse. Dubron strikes out the final two and holds the Dodgers to just the one run. Bottom of the fifth coming up. It's a 1 1 game. Kelly Moore Paints, the Painters Paint Store. Good ball game, 1-1, A's and the Dodgers here in the bottom of the fifth inning. As Sogard will lead it off against Kershaw. Kershaw has walked one, he has struck out four. As he faces Sogard. First pitch, Anthony's first strike. That was pitch number 58 for Kershaw. Want to play the game and really the difference in the game right now. Maybe Kershaw's play with Sogard hitting the curveball through the glove behind his back made the play and 
Who knows what Butler third might have been an infield hit. We'll never know because Kershaw made a great play. Two high fastball, 92 miles an hour. When Kershaw first came up, he was throwing 95, 96. Doesn't do that anymore. He's got three pitches he can strike you out with now. And that one drops in on the outside corner. Sogard is called out on strike. Kershaw made a start here at the Coliseum back in 2012. He was very good, but the game ended well for the Athletics. Remember this one, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, he had a lot of pitches working well. Sands the beard. That was June 21st of 2012. On the ground by Burns, Ryan scoops it up. So two outs. This is how that start by Kershaw ended. Another beautiful day here at the Coliseum. Was it a swung on? Gone. That's how quickly it went. Josh Lindblom, the lead pitcher, and you want to say this is first walk off. And that was the first of what 13 regular season. No, not the first because the first was the uh, loop down the left field line, I think. Against Kansas City, but a whole bunch of walk offs that year. I think Dennis Eckersley should have trademarked the name walk off. You know, like you should repeat, right. walk off. Just that every time Eck would have to explain that that's not the reason coined the phrase the walk off. It's that pitcher walking off the mound yeah. <laughs> with a bad feeling in his stomach. That's the walk off. That's the walk off portion. A couple of fly ball outs for Sam Full, one to center, one to left. You know what? I think it's, you know, we, we don't see Kershaw that much because in the National League, but it's good to see the intensity. Of somebody who makes as much money as he does and has the success that he has had, and he is as intense as there is, as we have seen tonight, demonstrated by his uh, frustration. See where this got Sam full. The way he's limping around, it probably did not get the guard. No, got him the right kneecap. There were a couple of weeks ago when he swung a couple of times and. Fell out of the batter's box, and that was kind of a, a toe issue. But this straight off the kneecap, and the only way you can protect yourself there is wear shin guards like AJ Ellis is wearing. See, AJ should pull his up just in case. <laughs> There's one. I don't, I don't, sure. Yeah. So one and two to full. Kershaw looking for his first three up, three down inning. He's had four hits off Kershaw. But you're right. He is. He does not mess around. No. Okay. How about this note? Lowest to career ERA in the modern era. And that's since 1920. Again, career ERA. Clayton Kershaw is first. Huh. The knuckleballer, Wilhelm, the chairman of the board, Whitey Ford, the Yankees, of course, the great one, Sandy Koufax. Gonzalez has it. He'll take it himself. Just beats Fold, side retired. So Kershaw does get his first three up, three down inning, and we're moving to the sixth. We got a 1 1 ball game.
be signing autographs at the Xfinity Store at 31055 Courthouse Drive in Union City on August the 22nd. That's just Saturday. From 11 a.m. to noon, this opportunity is limited to the first 150 fans, so make sure to get there early. 150 fans, that means you get to have a conversation instead of just go, 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 you know. Sign and go. Got a visit with Soki. Talk about those socks. Talk about getting intentionally walked by Buck Cholo. A lot of things to talk to Soki about. Adrian Gonzalez leading things off. First pitch is high to Gonzalez. Looked up Gonzalez career numbers. He's got a hit tonight, so he now has 1,760 hits and 286 career home runs. But he will play for a while. He's got plenty of time left. Well, still one of the biggest coups in baseball, maybe the Red Sox signing a couple of huge contracts, Juan Gonzalez. Paul Crawford. Yeah. The Dodgers took him. They did. <laughs> the Dodgers wanted Gonzalez, yeah. but they had to take Crawford to get both to get Gonzalez. Sounds like that happened when we were in Los Angeles, right? When all the yeah. trades were taking place. Oh, you want this guy? Well, you have to take this guy. Right. Dodgers started the season paying $39 million to players they didn't even have. Well, now it's up to like 80. 80. Yeah. More than a lot of clubs' payrolls, but they had the money to spend. They're spending it, trying to win. 3 1 pitch, and it's another walk. That's six walks by Dubron, and you may see the bullpen start to move around a little bit. Well, walks are bad, leadoff walks are horrible, and that's another one that's happened now three innings. Number 33. Six walks, six strikeouts. And slight. So Van Slyke steps up, a foul out to the catcher and a pop out to first. Goes after the first pitch. Fouls it straight back to the screen. Six and a third innings at Toronto for DeBron. He walked one. Gonzalez has a very short lead. I doubt he's going. I don't think so. I mean, if he couldn't go to second on the fly ball left field back in the second inning, I'd say a good chance he's not. But if you are a little bit delivered to the plate and you know runners are going to run, you may throw over a little bit more often, even with runners. Who aren't thinking about Steve? High again, and now it's two and one. They're starting to move around in the bullpen. In fact, we're going to get somebody warming up. It's like Vendetti. Jerseys are coming off, and the righty lefty Vendetti gets up. <laughs> There's a strike, two and two to count. Show what he said. With Vendetti, can you put his right arm on a 60 day DL and keep his left? Keep his left arm. <laughs> it's a fastball that was called a strike and fortunately didn't swing. That's a pretty good pitch to hit the right field. He brought, would love a ground ball. Not close, full count. Well, let's see what this pitch is. We have seen curveballs thrown two and two miss and then come back with a fastball three and two. That man is waiting. And Fegley knows how yeah. important this pitch is. Well, this might have been for the dugout too. Fegley like looked over to the dugout and then went out. This maybe to buy some time for the guy who throws with both arms. I mean, Medetti actually has both arms you could lose. Sure. It's not just That's hurry right. up and get one. That's Puig, Guerrero, Ellis. He had three righties due up. And then the lefty Peters. Lots of balls yeah. for Dubron. But to his credit, he has 
pitched through a lot of traffic tonight, and it's a 1 1 game. 3 2, strike three called on the outside corner, strikeout number seven. And the one thing about Dubrot, and while he threw the 2 2 curveball that wasn't close, and I think Van Slyke thinking more of a fastball, and he threw him a slider. Or cut it. Regardless, it was a great pitch, and it froze the hitter and got the job got job done. Back door. Only thing there that didn't happen, Gonzalez wasn't running. That would have been a good one. He could have thrown to second and back to first, <laughs> and got it. So one out. Here's Puig. Fly ball to left and a walk for Puig. First pitch, big rip, and it's 0-1. Week with 10 home runs, 35 runs batted in. And the batting average at 248. It's been a little bit of a struggle for Puig this year. There's that breaking ball that misses badly up and away. His third season in the big leagues. Last year, 296. The year before that, in 104 games, 319. He did homer against the A's down at Dodger Stadium, and it was a big home run. Jesse Chavez hung him a cut fastball. Chavez will be on the mound tomorrow. You're right, Larry. That was the Yasiel Puig bobblehead. Mother threw out the first pitch. He announced play ball, and he hit a home run. One two pitch is hit in the air, right center field. Burns should get there. He will, and he's got it. So that's out number two here in the top of the sixth inning, and that gets us to. Tomorrow's pitching probables. It's brought to you by Chevron. Dodgers have made a change. They're going to send the left-hander Alex Wood to the mound, and he will be opposed by Jesse Chavez. It was supposed to be Matt Latos, but Latos has not pitched well since the trade, and it sounds like they're going to put him in the bullpen for a little while. Alex Wood also a deadline acquisition. Who's he pitching for? He's got L.A. in the first and Atlanta hat. Must have come from the brain. <laughs> so Wood and Chavez tomorrow. That's a day game. 12 o'clock our coverage starts here on CSN California. Well, join us for some day baseball here in Oakland. Alex Guerrero. Not a real big guy, but good power. And a big swing, and it's one and one. The big swing portion of your statement was probably <laughs> what's this <laughs> rip. Hmm. Wow. He lets it go. I think Big Mac ever tells him shorten up. <laughs> well, if he does, he's not listening. <laughs> Into foul territory and into the seats, and Dubron gets ahead one and two. Right at 100 pitches for Felix Dubron. Trying to get through the sixth inning and keep it a 1 1 game. Dubron ahead in the count. That one golfed down the line. Foul. Short lead Gonzalez and the kick and the pitch a breaking ball and this time Guerrero was able to lay off. 
Vendetti should be pretty close to being loose. Right now, warming up with the left hand. Gives the nod, so he's good to go. Which arm? I think he already nodded good for the right arm, and he just did it with the left arm. And now we got a full count. And he might have Ellis because the pitch count might be getting to DeBron, and that's the fact that he's having difficulty throwing strikes, at least this part of the batting order. So Canna plays behind Gonzalez. He's going to let Gonzalez take off. And he does. And the pitch swing and a miss. He struck him out. DuBrat gets strikeout number eight. Again, works around the leadoff walk. And we're going to the bottom of the six. All tied at one. How about this game so far? Good curveball there. Hershiser, though, he thought he had a strikeout. He missed the ball. He, ah, he threw the ball. In the, uh, I thought, throw it in the dugout. Yeah, that's the first right there, all the way towards the dugout. And, and Mark Cannon take a little bit of extra time. Hershiser, or Kershaw saying, get him. I, come. I got a Hershiser on my mind. Kershaw. And then Dubrock with a good strikeout. One of his many tonight. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT, mobilizing your world. <laughs> so through all that, it's a 1-1 game. Valencia takes the first pitch in first strike. Six walks, eight strikeouts. And Felix Dubron did what he needed to do. Gave his team a chance to win. Now it's up to the A's to try to figure out the curveball of Clayton Kershaw because he's starting to throw a lot of them. Catcher AJ Ellis has done a, an excellent job blocking every one that he's thrown. Of course, catches him a lot, so he's familiar with his curveball. Very close. Took a little off. One and two. Fegley to follow, and then Cannon. Setting up outside. That one line foul right side. Well, we did not see the curveball that much the first three, four innings, and now the third time through the lineup, seeing it a little bit more. And there it is, and it's tapped foul. Well, that could be by design, it's Kershaw. Well, sneak his fastball and the slider. Then all of a sudden, here comes the curveball. And this is the third time through the batting order. Yeah, I, I got to believe it is by design. Yeah. So, two and two the count. 
Pitch count is at 75. Kershaw's last six starts, his innings pitched 9 8, 9 8, 6 8. So he's not coming out. Hit to right field where Puig in over. And Puig has it. So one away here in the bottom of the sixth. I think I've got or Hershey's on my mind because I remember two of the longest home runs ever hit by the guy in the Dodgers now, dugout as he hitting Coach Mark McGuire. The shot whenever they were constructing Mount Davis. Or Hershiser gave up a shot to Mark McGuire that went up so high. And, and Hershiser remembers the pitch. But he said the longer one I gave up was in Cleveland. That was the one below the scoreboard. Because Hershiser's great career with the Dodgers, but also included. He pitched for a while. For in the Cleveland, Indians, yeah. yes. And, but Mac took him. Well, who was it? Uh, they call the guy did all the YMC refrigerator, the ice box, whatever the guy was up there. But Mac, I think, won the set of baseball up to him. But the funny thing was how Kenny Lofton jumped like he was going to catch it. <laughs> it was so high, there's no chance. But Hershey's was a little bit like Jim Palmer because he can remember every pitch that's made to certain hitters. We know Jim Palmer can. Hershey's remembers every pitch he made in McGuire. Charlie Steiner just threw paper out of the window. <laughs> yes, he did. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> no, <that's so laughs> we got people. We got 30,000. We got a sellout. Well, maybe he signed an autograph for Watch this. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> Maybe he was signing autographs, but that's not right. Come on. <laughs> I, you know what? I did not throw any paper at Dodger Stadium out of the booth. How about this one? Here it is. This is Cleveland. Watch where this ball goes. Right below the bud sign. Matter of fact, it might have hit the bud sign. <laughs> Brad Fisher coaching first. Look, look at the shot hit. I think it did hit, hit the bud sign. It did hit the bud sign. Those fans looked upward, and that's when they sold out all their games. Curve and faintly chased it. Strikeout number six. So two outs here in the sixth inning. Oakland A's history. Mark McGuire is the home run leader at 363. Now, Reggie Jackson, Kitseko, Eric Chavez, Giambi, yeah. but great names on that yeah. list. Uh, Ricky Anderson at seven. Of course, the all time stolen base and down to number nine, Dwayne Murphy took all the pitches so he could steal. Big Mac against the Dodgers in 88, game three. The walk-off that gave the A's some hope. But that was very little hope because they lost in five to the Dodgers in 89 or 88. Two and oh now to Mark Canna. Shaw waiting for Canna. Now he's ready. And that one called the ball. Didn't miss by much. 3 0. Oh. This is what happened last time. You yeah. see, Kershaw is he's ready to pitch. And Canna is now ready to hit. You know, you know the time before. Ellis had not given him a sign. And as Kershaw was ready to throw, Ellis had not given a sign. So the question is, what would he have thrown? <laughs> Must have been predetermined to throw a fastball when he did that. But I think generally a catcher will wait for the hitter to step in. Exactly. There's a shot to left and a base hit. So Canna is a two out single hit number five off Kershaw. This is it, not on the list. This is Jay Howe, I think, pitching here. It was Jay Howe for the Dodgers and McGuire. You see the old stadium in 88. And that was the walk off. The A's lost the first two. But the devastating blow was that of the Kurt Gibson in the first game because the A's had the lead. Grand slam by Conseco. They lost game one. Hershiser won game two. Then A's did win game three, but lost four and five.
That was just like the 74 when the A's won in five. Split Los Angeles won three straight here. Billy Butler tonight has walked and he has grounded out. And then out in front of that one and hooks it foul into the seats. And then he throwing from the right side now as the first batter will be Ellis. And then the lefty Peterson. And then, oh, and they're going to get the switch hitter Jimmy Rollins. So that's what we're waiting declaration for. Declaration by Pat Vendetti. Oh, one pitch. Butler drives one. Left center field. Hit pretty well. Vance Lake at the wall and he makes the catch. So Billy Butler comes up just a bit short, and the A's do not score. Seventh inning coming up, Dodgers one, A's one. Hit his 145th career home run here at the Coliseum. It broke Reggie Jackson's Coliseum career home run record. The home run came off Esteban Yan of the Orioles. He had 52 that year. <laughs> the overall career versus the big seasons in St. Louis. Ended up with 583 career home runs, 10th most on the all time list. In 1980 or 1998, he and Sammy Sosa. Well, kinda, I don't want to say rejuvenated baseball fans, but I think I think gave right. baseball fans yeah. a little better feeling. The strike was still yeah. on people's minds, even though it was three, four years past. Uh, Cal Ripken Jr. probably that did helped. more to bring it back, and then what Sosa and McGuire did. So Pat Venditti comes in when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. Falls behind 2-0 to A.J. Ellis. Ellis has walked twice. He scored the only run for the Dodgers. That one misses inside and now it's 3-0. Dubron walked six. Did he pours that one in there first try? I'd just like to see something different happen in this part of the batting order that's happened previously. And that would be in the third and the fifth when both Ellis and Peterson walked. Scotty's got an elevated to bat boy tonight. Scotty's down there. He's not down the left field line tonight. So I'm running some baseballs out to the home plate umpire. Throw strike here. And he did, and it's foul back. Astros won three to two at home. They did in walk-off fashion. Marwin Gonzalez with the home run 
in the bottom of the tent. So 3 2 Astros over the Rays. So Houston holding on to first place in the AL West gets a win. Not close, like a slider that just spun. And Ellis, for the third time, walks to lead off an inning. And the Diddy's already switched the glove to the left side. Number 31, Jock Peterson. Here's Jock Peterson. So the Astros now with a three game lead over the Angels. Angels playing right now. These Dodgers will be in Houston this weekend. So that'll be a good series. First pitch to Peterson in first strike. Angels are leading the White Sox five to two. Watch the glove flip. Simple stuff. I think he's done that a few times. Do you think he's got a couple of those gloves? <laughs> I bet there can't be more than a couple in the whole country. It's not like I, gonna, I guess my point is, is ten years from now that glove could be like legendary. Probably already is, but that's a good yeah. point. By ten years, yeah. Don't maybe, give it away, Pat. Maybe bronze it, you know. Yeah. Oh man, big time. Azuno. 0-2 to Jack Peterson. Couple of walks for Peterson tonight. Slider outside. That game in Anaheim, it's Danks and Richards, the pitching matchup. Richards just left. But he leaves with that 5-2 lead. Did he go? No. Peterson has a leg kick like a lot of the Dodgers hitters, and as he lifted a leg and it came forward, the bat did not go though. And well, you could see all the body. And that's why if a home plate umpire makes this call, he's going to call up as a strike, and it's not. You have to defer to the corner in, uh, umpires. Took off a fastball going back to slider. And it's popped up. Shallow foul territory. Fegley with a basket catch. So that was a good pitch by Vendetti. It got Peterson <laughs> off balance. He was reaching for it. It was away. Yeah, Jimmy Rollins just looked at the umpire and put up both hands that which way? And it was the basket catch Jimmy by Josh Fegley. So nice play as it got a good breakout from behind home plate on the pop up and might have been his only play, or the only play was for Fegley. So Rollins was the on deck circle. He looked the umpire and realized that Vendetti, Jimmy Rollins already had the right handed batting helmet on. And I guess he thought he was uh, going to pitch to him based on the splits. Well, the splits here say Rollins as a right handed hitter is hitting 316, as a left handed hitter is hitting 206. Yes. Which has the power. Yep. Well, maybe. Yeah. Maybe Vendetti is. Maybe he's better left handed. Well, and the other one I remember was Swihart, the catcher for yeah. the, the Red Sox. And he initially had set up to pitch right handed, allowing him into left handed. And he changed. Remember before he got up on the mound, he said, I made a mistake. Because they had talked about all these before. So hitting left handed, it's hit nine home runs, only 206 batting average. But I, 79 at bats right handed. I, I just remember him more. Throughout his career, being a very good left handed hitter, leadoff hitter, and hitting some leadoff home runs. So, one and two the count. PK Hernandez, a right handed hitter, waits in the on deck circle. Rollins. Lofts one foul down the right field line. The Mariners beat the Rangers three to two in Arlington. That breaks the Rangers five game winning streak. Iwakuma over Gonzalez. So the Mariners for uh, one night anyways cool off. The Texas Rangers. 
Iwakuma didn't pitch a no hitter. He did not. No. He did pitch seven innings though. So Johnny Vandermeer is still safe. Huh? Yeah. Probably forever. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think he's good. Well, the Rangers coming into tonight just three back in the division and one back in the wild card. And they still play the Astros seven times and the Angels seven times. So the Rangers got a shot. A little bit inside, not by much. And the A's could have a say in all of them oh, because question. they, they play time. all those teams a lot. Rangers acquired Will Venable today from the San Diego Padres, a pretty good left handed hitter. So they add a little offense to an already good lineup. Will Venable, now a Texas Ranger. Now Peterson uh, actually was hitting when Ellis, this is back in the fifth inning, Ellis was running on the 3 2 to Peterson, then he walks if he runs now with Rollins to play. That one taps slowly. Valencia charges. He's going to go to second, and a nice play by Danny Valencia. Boy, a decision to make. And he figured he had just enough time to go to second, and he did. That's look a good play. How quickly he charges, that means then he has to throw it back across his body. And now these are plays that infielders will work on. They're thinking even before the pitch is struck. And of course, the slower runner and Ellis going to second base. A little quick look by Valencia to Rollins heading to first, but the only play, the best play, was to get the lead runner. That one almost hit Hernandez. Yeah, if you think about it, he pitched left handed to Peterson, left handed to Rollins, first pitch to the right hander. This is, you know, this is, I think, one of the things, and he's dealt with it a lot, but. Just happy that that slider didn't hang in the middle of the plate, that it ran off the plate inside. Yeah, that's got to be strange. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden you turn around, now you're throwing from the right. right side. Obviously, that's what he's all about, but still, the sure point is be careful with that first pitch right. when you right. switch. And Rollins was running, and he was either getting out an extra lead or he was actually taking off and then quickly got back to first. Sometimes that can lead to a pitch out. Well, in the hole, Simeon dives. He's got it. He'll throw the second. Not quite in time. Heck of a play by Simeon, but his throw just a little bit late to Sogar. Boy, anybody else besides the speedy Jimmy Rollins, that's an out of second. Great play by Marcus Simeon. And in the hole, the dive from his knees, throwing quickly to second. And just like Valencia, his first thought go the short route. Sogard stretching. Justin and Jimmy Rollins just too much speed. Excellent play though, and for Marcus Simeon just on the job training every day, working, 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 and that's probably a play that you can't really simulate a lot. It just has to be made as a reactionary play. So another big out to get by an A's pitcher. Dodgers have stranded six through the first six innings. Turner is 0 for 3. First pitch, tap to Simeon. He's got it. And the out is recorded at second base. Venditti gets out of a jam, and the Dodgers strand a pair. Seventh inning stretch from a boisterous Coliseum tonight. It's a 1 1 game.
by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. Dodgers 1, A's 1, 1-2 one, and 0 for L.A., 1-5 and 0 for the Athletics. Clayton Kershaw back to work. He's been good as expected. He's got six strikeouts. Eight ground ball outs, four fly outs. He came in leading the National League in strikeouts with 205. He had six more to that total. Reddick, Simeon, and Sogard. And this will be pitch number 90 for Kershaw. Reddick takes a little high, 2 0. You know, Cap, I'm impressed with the Dodgers defense and their setup. I mean, they're playing straight up. And, and this is an amazing yeah. goal. One team can do that, yeah. and another team does the exact opposite. And Reddick is single to left field in his second at bat. But, you know, just I can't think of tonight. Looking out and seeing guys moving all over the place, it's pretty much they've been straight up. And, you know, maybe that's uh, with Kershaw pitching. I don't know. But bottom line, there's something to be said about playing the normal position. And spray charts are there. You see them. You have them. Does not always mean the hitter's going to hit them and where you're set up. Well, you know what? That's keep an eye on that tomorrow. That's true. Another lefty yeah. pitches, but it's Alex Wood. But you're right. I don't think there's been a there has not been a huge shift. The full three infielders on one side of the diamond. And it is a leadoff walk for Reddick here in the bottom of the seventh. Well, lefty on lefty, and again going back to the Dodgers versus the Cardinals last October. Lefty's hit Kershaw, but boy, he is so good, so tough. Damian Lopes. On the bench, great second baseman for the 70s back in the 70s with the Dodgers. You got an array of former players. You got a lot. Yeah. Steph. Ron Renicky, we just saw yeah. Gary Renicky in both. Right. Simeon takes low. So I looked up. Yeah, maybe a next play for the athletics, you're right. Second baseman, Tony Phillips playing second there, or shortstop, and now Lopes, one of the all-time great base stealers. Feet first, how about that? That's rare. That's a pop. And Davey was excellent. And of course, remember him as a great second baseman for the Dodgers with Russell at shortstop, Barbie at first, Say at third, and now the first base coach. Pretty good guy to have on your staff to do a little base running and defense. Yeah, he could steal a bunch of bases, but he hit the ball in the ballpark. Oh, he, he was the complete package. And you know, again, you go back to prior to free agency, you had a set infield. Those guys played together forever. We talked in Baltimore about the great infield of the Orioles. And it's amazing what free agency does, whether it's minor league free agency or major league, and you have the changing of the personnel. And now it's 3 0. So Kershaw having a little trouble finding the strike zone. Sogard to follow. Bottom of the seventh. Yeah, this is a take situation. And for Marcus Simeon, he figured a couple of strikes. Rick Cunningham to the right of Don Mattingly. And that's a low strike call, 3 and 1. Well, is this a predictable 3 1 fastball? Probably not. <laughs> no, that's. If it is, it's a, maybe a good time to run, but it's probably not going to happen. And that one is hit hard to left field. That slide going back, and he turns around on the warning track, and he makes the catch. So you got a 3 1 count, and Simeon hit it well. But into the glove of Scott Van Slyke. Three and one. It's there. The four seam. Good swing. Head down. Great contact. Line drive. Just the positioning again. There you have your normal positioning of infielders and outfielders. And Van Slyke a couple of times tonight made the plays in left field. 
That one at the warning track. Just as he hit it, there was this huge breeze that picked up. I just wonder if it knocked it down. It did. <laughs> so here's Sogard. Short lead for Reddick at first. He inches off a little bit. Go ahead, Brad. I was thinking if Simeon had gotten on first and second, Sogard's the perfect guy to punt. Oh, yeah. And again, as we talked with certain lineups, depending runners on base, who's hitting, unlikely guys will sacrifice. But in a close game, Sogard would have been the perfect candidate, first and second, not now, though. So Sogard takes a strike. He is grounded out and struck out. Fernando Rodriguez throwing in the eighth bullpen. And just now have action for the Dodgers, Pedro Baez. Sogard lays off that breaking ball. So I looked up the Kershaw contract, Ray. Remember he signed that huge contract before the 2014 season. It's a seven-year, $215 million contract. Runs through 2020. It's about average of 30 plus yeah. a year, right? That is something special. <laughs> but you've got the breakdown, which is even more special. Wow. One, one pitch, and that's a strike. The first year of the deal was last year, and I don't know exactly what he made, but it was wasn't up to the average of the contract. But this year he's making thirty-two million dollars. Next year, thirty-four, and then after that, four straight years of thirty-five million dollars a year. I hope he can get by with that, man. Oh man, <laughs> what would you possibly do with that money? Well, what you get to do is. Every time you make a start, you figure there's one mil. <laughs> and you hope you go seven to eight innings to justify that. No, but he, he's justified, he I guess, is. in he's today's terrific. world of salaries and baseball. One and two, the pitch to Sogard is rolled toward third. Turner kicks it and juggles and now throws, and he throws oh. wide off the bag, and Sogard is safe. Oh, he came so close to having a run because you could see the ball was squibbed off the end of the bat. And you could see the spin and how Turner was going to have a tough problem with it. And then he panicked once he missed it. And double clutch, and he almost, I mean, Gonzalez is a great first baseman. That ball could very easily have been to the visiting bullpen, and Reddy could have scored. Sogard maybe to third base. What a play by. Adrian Gonzalez at third base. See the spin, hit him in the heel of the glove, and then panic, double clutch, and then fired a bullet way offline. But you can see off the bat, it was going to be trouble for the third base. So the Dodger defense commits their first air tonight, just the 53rd of the year. Here's Burns. Burns goes after the first pitch, fouls a straight back. Burns a single, a strikeout, and a ground out. He's looking for an RBI hit. And the future, I want when Burns comes up, just push a button because it's going to be recorded, and he goes after the first pitch. That's right. Because <laughs> that is as bad as automatic as we'll ever see in a hitter. But I mean, he's gotten so many hits. Stay with it. The curve stays high. You know, Ray, one more note on the, the Kershaw. And, you know, we're having fun with how much money he makes, but he's considered one of the, the classiest players in yeah. all of baseball, and he's extremely involved in the community. Yeah. And Philanthropy. And and big is. time. Yeah. Big time. So he's doing the right thing right. with the money he's making. No, that, that is the best part. I mean, you hear about all the great things that he does in the community, and you know, it's not as if he's taking it and putting it in his own pocket, which he's got a lot of that too, but he's also... Sharing sharing the wealth, if you will. He and his wife. He'll be 32 years old when that contract runs out. So in line for another one. He'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> but the A's got him on the ropes here in the bottom of the seventh. He's thrown 105 pitches. Reddick at second. Sogard at first, ready to take off. And a swing and a miss on a high fastball, 92 miles an hour. 
right over the top elevated the fastball maybe intentionally. Billy Burns a originally a right handed hitter that's. As his side from the beginning then became a switch hitter late left handed hitter. 2 2 pitch is grounded just foul right past Ty Waller. Angels are leading five to three over the White Sox in the ninth inning. Houston Street is on to try to close that. Angels trying to keep pace with the Astros who won earlier tonight. Two two little curveball popped up. And it'll drop foul. Peter. Peter's down there by himself. Well, he got all the good. He's got carrots and fruit. It's great Pete Delonzo. <laughs> it's kind of like the great late Bill King. Brings food, but you never want to share it because you don't want any of what he brings. Yeah. <laughs> Pete always has a bag of food, but it's some strange looking yeah, food. Yeah, you don't want any sharing. Have him share it with you. Now you eat it, Pete. Burns just got a piece of it rolled at foul. One of the things about Kershaw is kind of interesting with his stretch position, but when he settles down with the ball in the glove, it's kind of back a little bit on his left shoulder. You know, a lot of guys would bring it down to the set position of the waist, but the uniqueness of his stretch and his wind up, everything, throwing the balls in the <laughs> what he doesn't want them. But I'm sure he's got a good reason for doing that. I'd yeah. be curious to see yeah. what it is. It's almost like he's set up to to quick pitch and he's already in the position to throw. But watch see the LES on the Angeles as it comes high and then he settles down. Watch where he settles with the glove right there. See how it turns it? Huh. Huh. And a big curveball and burn swung over top. So Kershaw gets a big strikeout, number seven. You know, whatever he's doing, it works because he's pretty good. But it, it's like it's in that position, and whenever he drops a leg out of the stretch, it's kind of a slide step all the time. But it's almost like he's loaded up to pitch. The whiff percentage, wow. off-speed pitches, best in the big leagues. So. Let's say, I mean, he, you know, we saw his fastball. It's 92, 93, so it's not, you know, upper 90s. But I think it sets up that other stuff so well. So it's up to Sam Full. First pitch to Full. Hit into the second level foul. So Kershaw jumps out ahead 0-1. 111 pitches for Kershaw. 123 is his season high. After that, 117. Good take there by Fold. And another block by AJ Ellis. So that'll be seven. And of course the curveball, and I've not seen one get by Ellis with Kershaw pitching. That's pretty impressive. Marcus Jensen does a great job with the A's catchers working on blocking balls in the dirt and whoever works with the Dodgers catcher especially AJ Ellis a lot of credit. Strike with a fastball on the outside corner. So it's one and two. Yeah, out of part of the plate as the umpire slot where he's looking at an angle to the outside. The average pitches per game 103. And Sam Full laid off the fastball. Just feel like it, in that bat against this guy, you're just you're just fighting him. You know, you're just yeah. fighting him. Well, you look at the outfield; they're shading him. Well, that fielder that's like way over, almost near the A's bullpen, and figured if he makes contact, it's going to be a pitch away, and he's going to shoot it to left field. 
and a big curve and folds. Looked like he saw it pretty well yeah. and just got a piece of it. Well, this one kind of hung on the inner part of the plate for Sam Fold, and that's a mistake that Kershaw got away with. So pitch number 116 coming up from Kershaw with two on, two out here in the seventh. And it's bounced towards second. Hernandez has it, and that's side is over and the A's strand a pair so Kershaw walks off the mound keeps the A's off the board in the seventh we're going to the eighth it's a 1-1 one -one game Backpack presented by Chevron Techron Advantage credit card. It's on Monday, September 7th. 15,000 fans will receive this stylish backpack modeled after the preferred footwear of Sunny and Sogi. Get your Labor Day tickets now at athletics.com slash tickets or by calling 877-493-BALL. Good looking socks. She had a good ball game tonight. Should be a good looking backpack. So Pat Venditti back out there is he weaved in and out of Dodger runners in the seventh and was able to keep the Dodgers off the board as he faces Adrian Gonzalez so lefty on lefty that generally does not bother Gonzalez who's just yeah. a very good all around hitter but well, he uses the whole field as well as any as well as any major league hitter lefty or righty has power He's hit 24 so he used the whole field with the power as well. This one's popped up foul territory boy if you can get Gonzalez late in the game. Yeah. that is huge because he is a dangerous hitter. So one out here in the top of the eighth inning and that was a hanger it's ha hung up for him but. Instead of driving it kind of got under it enough to keep it in play. Number 33 and that Scott was there waiting Brandon and Swain. he just. Could not do anything with it. The A's have been looking for somebody in this part of the of the game. And ideally, you'd like to go set the start to go seven innings, then you go to the setup in the eighth, and then in the ninth. But what Pat Benetti has done, especially tonight, exactly what Bob Mel has been looking for. And a quick go two to Van Slyke. Well, I think the fact that Bob sent him out there for a second inning right. may say something. Exactly. Plenty of guys have got their chances in that bullpen, but unfortunately, not a lot of them have really stepped up. That one hit to left. Fold is back. Room got it. 
I did not have a good feeling. I did not either. Up. Because that was the hanger, just like the one Bob Melvin said. I don't think they're going to take another chance with that one. But the hanging breaking ball and Van Slyke. Yeah. That's the way we felt, Pat. Hey, Pat, this is Oakland. It's not Baltimore. <laughs> There's a difference. Sam Fuller had it easily. And who knows, Ray? It is breezy. Yeah. It's very breezy it tonight. That's just enough. Yeah. Coming to play. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up. Your oil change tune up and spawn experts. Coming up, it'll be the Rays and the A's this Friday. Get a ticket in our value deck behind home plate, an authentic A's grab bag, a cheer card, and a $6 food and drink voucher, all for one great price. The best deal in Barry of baseball is CSN's Authentic Fan Friday. That's where those folks will be on Friday. The Rays, right in the middle of the playoff picture, are the Rays. They're always there. Right. They always sure are. There. So here's Fernando Rodriguez, and he's going to face Yasiel Puig with two outs, nobody aboard, and a 1 1 game. Here's pitch to Puig. He's hit on the ground. Simeon backhands. He's going to have to hurry to throw to first. Not in time. Now Puig is just so fast, but he's also hurt. When he crossed first base, that's when he kind of came up a little lame. Excellent play. He used the dirt or the grass. And no, Marcus Simeon has been throwing some. Uh, he hit the first base bag hard with his left foot. And it looked like he's limping with his right foot. Well, training staff is out to check on him. Clearly safe. Running okay there. He's running okay there. He's running. It'll be a good race between he and Mike Trout. Oh yeah. Both big guys. But he was running hard for 90 feet. I don't know what happened after he crossed the bag and yeah, grabbed his back of his hamstring, the lower part of his hamstring. They're going to take him out. Yeah. Carl Crawford is going to come in. He may be just as fast. So Puig will leave. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen, the Los Angeles running for Puig. Number three, Carl Crawford. Uh, he's, again, he's holding the, the back of that Number right leg down Angeles, near the knee. Batting for Guerrero. Number 60, Andre Ethier. 
He's just telling fastball. <laughs> I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you right now. <laughs> the problem is, one minute later, you're limping back right. into the dugout. So, and biting off your helmet. <laughs> that doesn't really do much good. This is Andre Ethier hitting for Alex Guerrero. Ethier, dangerous left handed hitter. First pitch. A little bit low. I think Todd Tishner thought about calling it a strike. Isn't that amazing? You, you, you see this lineup tonight. You go to the eighth inning, and all of a sudden, here comes Crawford. Here comes Ethier. You're like, wait a minute. Why are these guys playing? But that's what the limits for the Dodgers they have had so many outfielders. Jack Peterson had stepped in and he's, Matt Kemp was traded because of him. Peterson's playing center. Then you got a crowded outfield. But Fernando trying to get through this inning. First two outs by Pat Vendetti. Infield hop, infield base hit. Yes, you'll play. And now it's 2 0. The Dodgers will look up at the scoreboard. The Giants won tonight in St. Louis by a final score of 2 0. So right now it's a two and a half game lead for LA. Two and 0 to Ethier. So now two and one. So Ethier waits the two one. Crawford inches off a little bit, and the pitch fouled straight back. So two and two. Long look by Rodriguez. Looks again, and now the two-two pitch. Grounded. Sogard has it, and then he kicks it and rolls away, and Ethier's going to be aboard. Sogard got a pretty good glove on it. But then it just trickled away from him. Uh, Sogard ranging far to his left and went to the spin, wanted to come up quickly and throw. And just no chance. If you're still and does run well, Sogard got it on the heel of the glove, and it's something about the, the outfield and good angle, but Going into the slide, lost it. So Kurt Young trying to get his hard throwing right hander through this tough part of the lineup and back the dugout. So seems we've said that every inning. I we? know. <laughs> this started with two outs on a one ball that looked like it was going to end up a lot deeper than it actually did. Now batting number 17. So AJ a Ellis again. A Ellis. Ellis. Has walked three times tonight. Three and the first time, three and two the next two times. Crawford, Ethier are your runners. First pitch to Ellis hit high in the air to left field. Fold is going back. Go. Wow. AJ Ellis a three run homer here in the eighth inning and the Dodgers lead four to one. And a three-run home run. Fastball. 
And there's your fastball to hit, and he hit it. And just the fact that for A.J. Ellis, it was his good swing on a fastball thrown very well by Fernando Rodriguez. And that's the unfortunate thing because he started with two outs. And then Puig with an infield hit. Ether with an infield hit. And then that blow. So the third home run of the year for Ellis. And I can't imagine the other two being any bigger than this one. Yeah. So this is Jacques Peterson. A lot of Dodger fans in the house and they just erupted. Good pitch there. One and one the count. Peterson has walked twice and fouled out. The curve drops low. Well, it's Kershaw's game to win now. So Rodriguez came in, two outs, nobody aboard. Mendetti got the first two outs. Puig the infield hit, Ethier the infield hit, Ellis the three run homer. It's not close and it's a walk. Hey, you think about Fernando, he went about 47 innings without giving up a home run. And that ended recently, and tonight just made it that much worse. Number 11, Jimmy Rollins. So Rollins will step in. Well, it was a home run to hurt the A's in Baltimore. Just a little bit. Yeah. Rollins hits for the fifth time. He's 0 for 4. He does have an RBI with the ground out in the fifth inning. So eight walks now by the A's. And the A's have been messing with fire all night, Ray, and it finally got him, although this was not walks. But. And amazing that only one walk had scored, and that was Ellis on a ground out by Rollins back in the fifth inning. Dubron allowed just one hit. And that was a hit that shouldn't have been a hit. That was the one in the second inning, fly ball left field, but a lot of walks. It got out of the jams, but this inning has not worked well for the A's as far as getting out of jams. And it all started with two outs. High and foul. So 0 and 2 to Rollins. Pitch in the air, Simeon out, fold in, and it'll be Sam Fold who grabs it side, retired. Major damage done by the Dodgers. AJ Ellis, a two out, three run homer, and the Dodgers now lead four to one as we go to the bottom of the eighth.
Dodgers. Four, five, and one for the Dodgers. One, five, and zero oh for the Athletics. Clayton Kershaw goes seven innings through 116 pitches in. The big hit, A.J. Ellis, in the top of the eighth, a three-run homer with two outs. So that is the story in this game, and that's your game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. So the A's will have two more cracks at what is now going to be the Dodgers' bullpen. Well, the bad part about this is you get to the bullpen with only two innings to try to do something. Because all that happened in the seventh inning. 36th appearance for Baez. Dodgers have a very good closer, <laughs> Kenley Jansen. They have had some issues with non closer personnel in their bullpen. And they made a couple trades, picked up a couple guys at the trade deadline, Jim Johnson being one of them, but he has not pitched well. But well, I got some power in this kit. Uh, Baez can throw upper 90s. So Carl Crawford is now the left fielder. Van Slyk goes over to right field. Puig is out. One and one the count to Danny Valencia, who is one for three. Strikeout, single, and a fly ball to right field. Tapped over the mound. Rollins cannot get it, and it's in the center field. So the A's have a leadoff single. So hit number six for the Athletics. Good fastball. Then he threw him a slider, and Valencia running hard this time, thinking he's going to have to beat out an infield hit, but it made it up the middle. Angels won that game against the White Sox, five to three. Elmer Pujols hit another home run. He's got 33 on the year and 553 now in his career. So the Angels remain two and a half back of the Astros. Fegley takes low. Yankees won tonight eight to four. Alex Rodriguez hit a grand slam. And the Blue Jays beat the Phillies eight to five. So Yankees with a one game lead over Toronto. Good swing, right side foul. Mets beat the Orioles five to three. Couple of home runs for Curtis Granderson. Jacob Degrom is twelve and six. So we just saw the Orioles. So their winning streak is snapped. Orioles now five back in the East. Angels take over the second wild card as the Orioles fall back out of that spot. Begley shot to the gap and that's headed to the wall and it bounces off the wall. Valencia is going to go to third. He'll stop there. Fegley with the double and the A's got something going here in the bottom of the eighth. Now the A's is staying, staying with Josh Fegley with a hard throwing right hander coming in and he did not disappoint as he got an elevated fastball and he crushed it. Not exactly where Baez probably wanted to throw it, but Josh Fegley took the mistake and nobody's going to catch it. Quickly to the warning track into the wall, and at least the A's have something going and a chance to at least add a couple. And Rick Honeycutt hustling out. JP Howell, a left hander, starts to throw. And the A's have on the bench. Davis, Vote, Laurie, and Crisp. How just now starting to get loose. The bye is in trouble immediately as Canna steps in.
Canna's had a good night. Couple of singles. He scored a run. He scored the A's only run in the second inning. Butler is the on deck hitter. First pitch is driven to right center. That's hit pretty well. Peterson on the move. Nobody's going to get it. One run scores. Here comes Fegley. He's going to score. It's four to three. Canna with a two run double. It's amazing to see a ball slice that much and yet nobody can get to it. And Mark Cannon with his third hit of the night, two against Kershaw, and this fastball jumped on the first pitch, and once again going opposite field, and once again hitting it deep enough nobody could get to it. And Schleich had the ball slicing back, not enough time. Gag said, "Let's go! Come on, come on, let's go! You gotta go," he said. <laughs> you gotta go. So now the A's have the tying run at second, nobody out. Butler the hitter. First pitch, Butler shoots one foul right over top of the Dodgers dugout. It is a sellout crowd tonight, 35,067, third sellout of the year. And they have seen a good ball game. And congratulations to those fans. Tuesday night sellout. I don't care who you're playing and what the giveaway is. You sell out a Tuesday night in late August or mid August. Butler up the middle. And Billy Butler does his job. So that's pretty good at bat. And obviously, best case scenario, Butler driving him in. But he's thinking about doing the right thing. And he did. Hits it to the right side. And you can see him adjust his swing to do exactly that. He did not want to get out in front and pull it. And Don Mattingly is going to go to his left hander with Reddick coming up. But watch the swing by Billy Butler. Stay inside. Look at that's a great swing. And that's a great job by Billy Butler to do exactly that. And so Butler with a walk. And that might have been a big out. You're going to see it tonight. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. How coming in to face Reddick. And J.P. Howell is perfect for Josh Reddick. How the former Tampa Bay Ray, four and one on the season, a one five nine earned run average. He's pitched well, but he's a soft tosser, as they say. And for lefty on lefty, Josh Reddick, we've seen him go to left field, the infield straight up, outfield straight up. Let's we'll see if Josh Reddick takes that off speed pitch, breaking ball away from him, and shoots it to left field. First pitch. Is a good one. Late break, and it's 0 1 to Reddick. Reddick is in a sacrifice bunt. That's Jim Johnson getting up. Reddick with a sack bunt, a single, and a walk. That's a curveball to you. Sign given. And there's a 
shot. What a play. Turner, and he dropped it, and everybody's safe. He made a terrific stop, but when he went for the exchange, he could not get it out clean, and Reddick's aboard. Uh, that's Jeff, a huge break for the A's. Uh, Jaws took it perfectly and could not get it past Turner, but I don't know who he's looking to the runner at third base to see if he's going to be doing anything when he looked up and made the transfer. That's when it popped out of his glove. Cannon was not going to go. Actually, he pointed to Turner saying thank you because he just saved a rocket yep. going to left field and it could have been a game tying hit by Josh Reddick whose idea was perfect with the lefty. So they may be given Jim Johnson a little extra time. He has not been warming up a long time. And Johnson's a sinker ball pitcher, as we remember. And former closer with the Orioles brought here to close. Didn't work out. On deck hitter is Sogard. So Howell's going to face Simeon. You know, Marcus has to stay back just like Reddick did. And they're shading him up the middle just for the possibility of a double play. First pitch, line drive, base hit, left field. And this ball game is all tied up at four. First pitch, wide way around. He got one right down the middle. This excellent hitting by both Reddick and now Marcus Simmons got the change up, stayed back, and this is just very good scouting and also great approach by the A's hitters. And this is just something that's going to help in the future, and you're seeing it right now with Marcus Simmons. Big at bat, grounded out his first at bat to get a runner in and get another one in the third base, and this is perfect. So here's Sogard. So they gave Reddick a hit on his then. I believe they did. Yeah, yeah. Only one error, and that was last inning. So the A's had five hits off Kershaw through seven innings. They have five hits in this inning alone, and only one out. Sogard pops up a breaking ball, should reach the seats, and it will. Kershaw scattered five singles. One in the first, second, third, fourth, and sixth. One, two, three, fifth inning, but no singles really, except for the first or the one in the second inning cannon. You don't want to score. The rot, no decision. Good job by him. Same for Kershaw. It's a bullpen's game. Baez, a tough night. Give a ball three. Yeah. Speed on the bases for the Athletics with Reddick and Simeon. I have to wonder with Johnson warming up and a sinker ball pitcher with a right handed hitter. Not much chance of a pinch hitter. And if you're going to go for a double play, that would be the more logical guy to yep, pitch. No question. And the surprise didn't bring him in. So another. Great start by Clayton Kershaw is nothing more than a workout. And that is unless the Dodgers saw what happened here opening night last year against the instruments. That didn't turn out very well for one Jim Johnson. It's a bad beginning for him. Right in there, and it's two and two. So again, getting to Kenley Jansen. A problem for the Dodgers. Evan Scribner heating up for the looks like the ninth inning. So guard slaps it foul. Interesting thing about Evan Scribner, I'm going to say the ninth inning right now it's a tie game, and the closer usually comes in in the ninth inning in a tie game. To get your bat back to the bottom of the ninth. So the ever revolving closer role for the athletics and Evan Scribner, who has had the opportunity. 
the minor leagues and prior to coming through the athletics and looks like he's going to have the knife regardless and it's a good sign he's got good stuff good enough to do it. Hayes would love to have the lead for him to come into the ninth inning. A little high and now we got a full count. Very good at bat for Sogard he is working how. Well, he is doing exactly what Josh Reddick did, just trying to wait, think opposite field, and never want to roll over on a pitch from a soft toss. JP Howe does not touch the 90 mile per hour mark with a fastball. Runners go, and the ball's grounded fair right over the bag, and Gonzalez grabs it, so that's the second out. How close did that come to hit in the bag? That's what would have been so nice because the two runners were on the move. So confidence of that man, Bob Melvin, the so is going to put the ball in play because you had lefty on lefty and always easier for a catcher to throw. And Mattingly's going to go out and he's going to bring in Jim Johnson, turn Billy Burns around left hand, and let's just hear what is going to happen then. It was sad opening day here last year, and they're already starting. So what it's ever changed, thanks to the oil change in tune-up, your oil change tune-up and small experts. This Saturday, August the 22nd, all encouraged to wear your Star Wars costumes and enjoy the post-game show from the outfield grass. Though space is limited. How about those great fireworks? Man, that's so beautiful. Crew just stayed around to watch them. So we get a chance to show you exactly what they look like. Purchase a special ticket package to receive an R2D2 beanie. Visit athletics.com slash Star Wars for more information. So Jim Johnson to face Billy Burns second and third two outs and this game is now tied four to four. And Billy Burns bounces in foul. Broke his back. Jim Johnson came over in a trade from the Atlanta Braves to the Dodgers. Johnson. Was pitching OK with the Atlanta Braves but. He has not pitched well for the Dodgers. Six appearances, five and a third innings, and 12 earned runs. That's right, folks. I'm not making that up. And of course, struggles with the A's last year, especially here at home. Lots of good years with the Baltimore Orioles. But just could never get it going here with the Athletics. Well, it's just a tough opening night, and that kind of started everything, but. It really never got better for him. Never after that one. Burns is one for four. Good pitch there. A lot of movement. 94 miles an hour. So the count 0 and 2. 
The two seamer and it ran back. It was up in the zone, but still a strike. Well, with the runner at third, and Billy Burns with his speed could get another infield hit. Give the A's the lead. Hangs in there on that one. Or just a hit in general. Few people left after A.J. Ellis's three-run home run. Those people who left are disappointed as they're driving home listening to Ken and Vince on the radios wondering why did we leave? It's a good game. You never know what can happen late in the game. And people are going to be disappointed they're not here to watch this big comeback by the A's. 0-2 pitch. Big curve. <laughs> he burned somehow. <laughs> Was able to get a piece of it. Not quite sure how he got a piece of this. Off the back foot. Back foot. That's quite a swing if you make us pass at it like that and just make contact. That's all he's trying to do. And the infielders are really thinking about if he puts the ball in play, especially the sinker ball that Johnson throws. Swing and a miss. He struck him out on a high fastball, but the A score three times. And so as we go to the ninth inning, this ballgame is now tied at four apiece. Start his first for the athletics inning. He did quite well. And just one hit. That was a one, one in the second inning on a fly ball to left field that probably should have been caught. Just the one run, not an earned run. It was on the pass ball. Six walks, eight strikeouts. And talk about pitching out of some trouble. Felix Duran did, and Felix Duran did a great job for the athletics in his first start. Six solid innings, and he's have doubled the hits of the Dodgers. And like I've said, all five of those hits to double it came in the eighth inning. So the ninth is for Evan Scribner. Tie game, first pitch, strike. Faces Hernandez, Turner, and Gonzalez. And there might be a bod for Gonzalez right now. Adrian in the third spot. A couple of righties, and then a lefty. And Sogard cannot quite get it. Missed over the outstretched jump of Sogard. So Hernandez has a leadoff single here in the ninth inning. Cut fastball into the bat. Sounded like a broken bat. Looked like Sogard might have a chance to get to it. And he headed back and just hit hard enough and just over the glove of Sogard. Wow. Let's just hope the A's weren't teasing everybody. And <laughs> down three, score three, and can't get the hit to drive in the go ahead. And Fernando Abad. Getting loose. Turner up. Gonzalez in the on deck, sir. 
First pitch, Turner swinging away, hits it hard right to Simeon. Shovels to second for one, double play. It was Taylor made, hit hard. Took a nice hop for Simeon, and it was an easy double play. And that's what the cut fastball can do for a pitcher. The one that he gave up the base hit off the end of the bat, but this, the perfect one right to Marcus Simeon. And going out of the baseline, actually, it was Hernandez going after Sogard. So it probably been a double play regardless if the umpire was paying attention at second. You have to be able to reach second. He could not, but the A's turned it easily. So here is Gonzalez. I don't think Eric Sogard was all that crazy about that slide. A nope. little glance back yeah. to Hernandez. And well, you're just hopeful if you don't turn the double play that the umpire is paying attention because that's automatic double play. You have to be able to touch the bag. You cannot go after a middle infielder that much out of the baseline. And Sogard did a good job of getting through the Second base, so he did not have to worry about that. Watch the spikes too, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. Right there, look. Yeah, came see, up. Yep. that's not good. A late slide, and the spikes go up right there. Yeah. They got him with the foot, and again, the umpire should have been pointing at it, even though the uh, the double play was turned. So 0 and 2. Big curve this time. Gonzalez lays off, so the count one and two. In the bottom of the ninth inning, the A's will have Fold, Valencia, and Fegley. It'll be either Garcia or Jansen. Hit hard, right to Canna, who scoops it up. And Scribner does the job, and we are going to the bottom of the ninth, folks. It has been quite a ball game tonight. 4-4 game, Dodgers and A's. Bottom of the ninth, Dodgers A's tied 4 4. And the Dodgers go back to the bullpen. They will bring it right into Jimmy Garcia. Another hard throwing right hander. Mid upper 90s fastball, good cutter, save opportunities. Not good. One for six. Of course, you're not the closer. You can come in and tough jams and blow a save, but. Ains would like to score a run and make this in a very exciting come from behind win. Ains had the Rasmus three run home run the Astros in town they came back and. Tied and won the game in the walk off fashion that was the final game of the Sunday last home stand. Trying to do it again tonight. 
So Garcia facing Sam Fold, who's 0 for 4 tonight. So right hamstring tightness for Garcia Puig. And with the day game tomorrow, we may not see him tomorrow either. Shouldn't run too fast. That was he was running too fast. He's too fast. He's too fast for his own hamstring. But one thing he and Cespedes can do the same. That's throw. Both have unbelievable arms. So a quick go to to Sam Fold Valencia to follow and then Fegley here bottom of the ninth inning. Dodgers scored three in the top of the eighth and the ace answered right back with three in the bottom of the eighth. Sam Fold broke it back grounds it towards second Hernandez has it run out. Well, this is what happened I guess. Rick Gregerson over the head of third baseman and the A's of the walk off. That was a week ago Sunday, the last home game. Never again. It was just a week ago. And oh, Frank down there trying to keep the head for his shot, right? Frank. <laughs> Frank trying to be avoid being doused and keep the headsets going. Couple of hits for Valencia. He started that eighth inning with a single. First pitch is inside. Ellis, his throw back to the pitcher, he held on to it a little bit too long. Luis Avalon, another deadline acquisition by the Dodgers from the Braves. Valencia, a little bit of a hanger. And it's one and one. Everything is final in the American League. Couple games still going on in interleague game. The Tigers are leading the Cubs seven six in the eighth inning at Wrigley, but they had a long rain delay in that game. Breaking ball, very close. Call the ball two and one. Center. Peterson gets there. And the hanger just missed. Yep. I think Valencia would like to have another rip at that pitch. Now the number 19. So here's Fegley with two outs. Try to get something going. First pitch is a little bit low. Fegley, one for four with a double. And a big double in the eighth inning. It got runners to second and third with nobody out. High fastball, that's. Uh... I don't care if you're facing lefties, righties, you get a pitch in the middle of the plate. It's about belt high. Most hitters are going to hit it as hard as he did. But two and one the count. If he were to get on, Canna would hit. Canna's had a big night. Two and two. That slider hung on the inside part of the plate. And a piece of AJ Ellis. A big piece. <laughs> Got him in the left arm. You got the chest protector and sweatband, the glove on his left hand, and it missed everything except for skin. Two two pitch. And we'll do it again. Ten hits for the A's, back to back doubles, Fagley and Canna, and that's really the difference in the game. See why Kershaw's so good, because 
couple of innings, gave up two out hits, actually three. Three of the five hits he gave up came with two outs. Well, I think it goes back to what we were saying. It's hard to get two, three hits off him yeah. in an inning. So what the A's do it gets the bullpen to get five. That's right. <laughs> The slider on 3 2 side retired. We're going to extra innings here at the Coliseum. It's a 4 4 game, A's and Dodgers. The CSNCalifornia.com is our A's and Center. Joe Stiglitz provides wire to wire reporting for this A's 2015 season. He's got breaking news, video, special features, and much, much more. It's only on CSNCalifornia.com. What a great smile on Joe. Yeah. I like it. Man, I really enjoy my, my work with CSN California. I know it's, it's happy to be here. <laughs> As we all are. Next innings, there are the numbers, athletics. Four and nine Dodgers, five and five. But what a difference this is going to make. <laughs> it's a gamer. Wow. Yes, indeed. Another gamer. Those legs aren't cold. <laughs> 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 Scribner out there is he pitched the ninth inning gave up a leadoff single but then got a double play. Facing Van Slyke Crawford and Ethier those are the three scheduled hitters and that's probably the most scary uh, of hits or at least drives by the Dodgers that was Van Slyke in his last at bat Fernando. Getting loose quickly as he did last inning but did not need to come in maybe for Ethier than this inning. Sogard is going to grab this one. Last inning, he just could not quite get up and get it. This time, he did. And here comes Bob Melvin as Crawford and Ace through the schedule. That ball also sound like it hit towards the end of the bat, but nice read by Eric Sogard. As Tim Welker, the second base umpire, was getting out of the way. So Evan Scribner goes in inning and a third. He does his job and now Abad's job is to get a couple of good veteran left handed hitters in Crawford and Ethier. 4 4 game Abad coming in. We'll be back.
Simple job here for Abad. Got to get the left-handed hitters out. Last year he was extremely good at it. This year, early on he struggled. Been a little bit better lately. Not his comment, and of course it did not apply in Baltimore when he gave up the big home run to Chris Davis, but lefty on lefty. But that's it right there. The hard, everything hard. He said that's what he has learned, and he's got an opportunity now with two lefties to use the hard slider, the curve, and everything hard, including the fastball which he just threw Crawford. First at bat for Crawford. He was a pinch runner in the eighth inning, and now he's behind in the count on two. And that was a fastball that Crawford had no chance. Started the swing, held up, and got waited to get in. The A's would love to see him just stay right there. Yep. That's not the guy you want to see. No. Simeon charges, and it's going to be an 0 2 hit. And once Abad got his glove on it and didn't catch it, there's no chance to throw him out. Crawford runs too well. Simeon, even if he bare hands it, he's not going to make the play. And Abad, and that was going to go right to Simeon. That's. And now, letting Abad get a hit off his hand. Or might have missed his glove and hit his wrist. Uh, check the the right hand of Abad. Does it hit the glove? Nope. Got him in the wrist. That'll hurt. Yeah. It, he went down to, to catch it and it hit his wrist, and that's the reason the attention is being paid to him. Walt Horn checking it out. Does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts. It's just a line drive off my wrist. Walt. Walt's like the pain whisperer. I'll just talk you right down. You'll be okay. Walt's got his walkie talkie on there, too, just in case he needs to call for assistance. So they're going to let Abad toss a few, see if he's okay. The important part of that was catching the ball in the return. Because throwing, he didn't get hit in his throwing right. hand. He got hit in the glove hand. But still, it's you know, PFP again. It's very difficult to handle a ball that's hit that hard. You don't know and reach down. And again, if, if pitchers sometimes just realize where the infielders were, they're always going to try to catch the ball, but you know where the guy is positioned behind you, you deflect it. Turns out to be a hit. So Ethier with a big swing, 0 1 1. Ethier had a base hit right before AJ Ellis' three run homer. Sogard knocked it down, could not get a play on Ethier. And that was back in the eighth inning. The 1 and 1 the count. To the veteran outfielder Andre Ethier. Former A's minor leaguer. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on Crawford. Two and one to count. Crawford has three steals on the air and only played in 34 games. But at one time, maybe the top two or three base dealers yeah. in all of baseball. Bounced foul. Yeah, Tampa Bay, he could do no wrong. Oh my goodness. Triples, batting average, home runs, stolen bases, cover the outfield ground. And on to Boston, and that did not go well. Well, it's just. I mean, and granted, how you turned down the money that yeah, the Red Sox gave it. him, but you know, bottom line, if he had stayed at Tampa Bay, who knows the career he could have had. That one hit to left field, fold on the move, still on the move. Sam makes the catch, gets it back in quickly. 
And Crawford back to first. Heck of a play by Sam Fold. Remember yesterday in Baltimore when a ball was hit to Canna in left field, either yesterday or the day before? But watch how this ball is handled. It's slicing away from the left fielder. And this is the way you play it. Slicing, slicing, Sam Fold going after it and makes the play. And you know, you have to know that if lefty hits the ball left field, it's going to slice towards the line, righty to right field line. And Sam Fold played both corner positions plus center field. He knew exactly how to play it. And really the excitement of the fans, but really not necessary because it's handled very nicely and very easily. So here's Ellis. This is what he did in the eighth inning. And that was a big hit. Huge hit. So at that time it was four to one and it did not look good for the A's, but they answered back immediately. One and one to Ellis. He's also walked three times tonight and scored a couple of runs. Terrell starts to throw. J. Ellis, not the everyday catcher for the Dodgers. Yeah. Spani Grandal, very good player. Gets most of the time behind home plate. And again, Mattingly left Ellis in after Kershaw was coming out. Riding on riding, it's a home run. Yep, that's right. Instead of bringing Grandal in. That's the switch hitter. Same Fegley with the big double he got off the right hander with Stephen Vogt in the dugout. Outside two and two looked like it may have been off the plate just a little bit. How long can you hold it? <laughs> two and two. Crawford with a good lead at first, so Abad will check on it. Jansen. Is standing down in the bullpen. So he's ready, whatever happens. Number two, the Dodgers had yesterday off, and they have Thursday off. Well, emergency swing. Well, it's not often that a closer comes in a tie game on no, the road. No, hardly ever. Yeah. It's rare, depending on the part of the batting order. We have seen closers come in. And of course, it's righty, righty, lefty for the Athletics. Due up in the tenth. You have to figure if he's going to pitch one, he need to pitch two. That's right. Yeah, that's again with the off day yesterday and Thursday, as you mentioned, that's a possibility. Figley got hit pretty good, but he's okay. Just shake it off, get the cobwebs out, spit the teeth out, and go get him. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, the way he shook his head, and, it, <laughs> and you feel it. And it looked like he felt that one, but oh, look at all that padding around the face. He like like that mask. Another two-two pitch. Changeup is outside. Now, if he throws him a fastball, it's got to be a good one, good location, because Ellis likes fastballs. So be careful here. Runner's going to be taken off. That'll be Crawford. Outfield is deep. And they will have to hustle on any ball in the gap with Crawford and his speed. And Ron Rennick, his first game coaching third for the Dodgers. Good call. And it's low when he walked in. So two on, two out. And the left handed hitting Jock Peterson is going to hit. So AJ Ellis has walked four times tonight. And I got nine walks now by A's pitchers. Yep. 
So here's Peterson. I don't think the advent by Ellis for Abad was a pitch him carefully for this guy because it does put the go ahead run at second base. And we know he swings hard. First pitch in the dirt. That right there is Josh Fegley's reputation because Crawford has great speed at second. But that ball got far enough away if Crawford had any kind of secondary lead he could have gone to third he could have walked to third. But once he stopped and couldn't see and thought about it of course two outs and not want to be thrown out and. Fegley would just like to have the opportunity. One 0 pitch and that's a good one. Right on the outside corner 93 miles an hour. Bob trying to get the A's back into the dugout. Keep this a 4 4 game. Slider, good one. One and two. Well, you like those knee bucklers, especially after throwing the strike to even account and then throw the hammer, throw it hard enough, watch the buckling of the knees by Peterson. And that once he buckles the knees, he cannot swing the bat. Gets the foot down and, ooh, and at that point, no chance to do anything. Just to hope he does not get one similar to that. What was that about? So a very late timeout granted. That's horrible. I mean, it's not like Bob, uh, Bob takes forever to get rid of the ball. He was well into his oh, windup yeah. when the home plate umpire called timeout. But Is that's it? requesting time. Yeah, he the does. Umpire is the one who calls. And he should never have given it to him. There's no way. Because Abad was not taking a lot of time. If the guy takes it, he holds. But he was doing exactly that when he called time. He just threw him a nasty pitch that he took. Or at least was a pretty good pitch that he threw. Great night for. Wow. So the count is two and two. Checked his swing. And now it's a full count and the runners will be going again. You see Fegley letting his infielders know you got to go across the diamond with your throw to first base. Here's a time if he throws a slider or curve, throw it hard. You want a hitter to commit. He's throwing a fastball. And he got him with a fastball right there on the outside corner. Strike three called. And Abad wiggles his way out of it. A couple more runners stranded by the Dodgers. Bottom of the tenth coming up. Canada lead it off. 4 4 game.
17th Annual Breast Cancer Awareness Day presented by Zevia, the Zero Calorie Soda, and supported in part by Tina Bob Water, Nelson Staffing, Comerica Bank, and State Roofing Systems of San Leandro. And prior to the game, 10,000 fans will receive a breast cancer awareness scarf courtesy of Zevia. To join the fight, purchase your special tickets now at athletics.com slash survivor. Mark Cannis had a great night. Just cap your night with a walk-off. How is that? Right? Had his first walk-off that Sunday we talked about. Well, that was the Fegley a little bit earlier than that was the Canada the double on, on the Mike Gallego wind-up windmill tour. That was great. He hit the ball off the left center field wall. He's had a good night and as we've seen he's playing more and more against righties and that's the double off the righty in this game by us. First pitch to Canada will slider that spins in there first strike. For Garcia his second inning of work he had a three up three down bottom of the ninth with a strikeout. One hit hard but foul. Looks like he likes that slider huh? Yes, right? He does yeah. Canada looking at one to hang that he just hung but get third baseman. Guard of the line, that is Turner. The line gets up again, the left hander. And there's a shot down the left field line. It is fair. Bounces up against the wall. Canna hustling for second. And that is the winning run at second base with nobody out. And Mark Canna is four for five. What a night. A little bit higher, and he would have had a walk off. First four hit game, the rule five, and fastball in a part of the plate. And well, we have seen some two strike hitting by Mark Canna. Saw it in Baltimore. And now this one hit so hard that close to being a home run. Pulled his hands in a little bit. He did. He knows how to do that. Well, Billy Butler did a great job his last at bat moving Canna over to third base with a ground ball to the right side. And he hits one down the right field line. Fair ball. And they're going to wave home Canna. And the throw is airmailed. And the A's have won the game in the bottom of the 10th inning. Billy Butler's your hero tonight with a little help from Mark Canna.